Pokemon Legends ZA is on the horizon. It's slated for 2025, but what other games could we see in the future? Welcome back to Hidden Power. This is a Pokemon podcast. There are so many great Pokemon games to look forward to. Generation 10, new future remakes, creative new art styles, and innovative gameplay mechanics. We do a lot of predicting on this show, and today we're speaking to an incredibly talented creator in the Pokemon space and debating what the future of Pokemon could look like. My name is Dusty Gogoat. I'm also joined by the Lumios Post, Soul Silver Art, and our special guest today, Lou Two. Good morning, guys. How you doing, man? Hi, uh, I'm doing all right. Yeah, man, we're happy to have you on. So just for the listeners, let's give a little bit of context. Back in March, I was uh, using my freedom of speech to communicate some fun ideas, and we got challenged. The Hidden Power Podcast <laughs> got challenged by you, Lou Two, on March 3rd. Uh, right here, Lutu writes, I will come on your podcast to debate your psychic powers. Please find a moderator. You have 72 hours. I uh, anoint Lumio's post as the moderator. Um, it actually took it me. Lumi and not me. I'm yeah, it, it took me a long time. Yeah, because Lumi, I can. I feel like I can like influence Lumi. Uh, but oh my gosh. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> I, I feel like uh, did he I just can't. say I was weak? No, I think you're artistic <laughs> and you are. You can be swayed. Right in 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 either direction. So for listeners, uh, we've got Lutu here on. Before we move any fur any further, right? There's a lot of concepts that I threw out over the last year. Um, these are potential things that you guys, you know, regular listeners have heard me talk about plenty of times on the show. Um, I'd love to get Lutu's takes on these. But before we go too far, I do want to get some context for Lutu for who you are, and so the listeners can get to know you a little bit more. T- tell us this: How'd you get your mascot? It's literally. Oh god, the story about this is so funny. So, I just I was looking for like in a, names to use on the internet. This would have been about like twenty eighteen. Okay. Uh, and I've been through like so many, and I was just like, you know what? Which one works best with my name? Just so I can like use that across everything. Yeah. And uh, my friend also, I hadn't gone public with it, but my friend had suggested it to me like two days later. And I was like, I don't want to look like I'm stealing this guy's idea yeah. for my name. But no, it is. Uh, yeah, it's literally just my name. So it, It's a good I'll name. Like Lou. It is a very good name. Lewis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lewis Mewtwo. I, that's really nice. Uh, there. Wait, so you said, there's, you said you had other names? Uh, no, I mean, I have before, but like ones that I was just like reconsidering. Like Lou okay. was the first one that came to mind. I was like, you know what? Let's just run it. Okay. Yeah, dude. And Mewtwo is Don't like have... the best Pokemon. Yeah, yeah I I mean it's powerful. He's... Like in, in, I really in universe. Video on Mewtwo one day. He's so good. In universe, yeah. it's like it's undefeated. Tell the audience what you do online, what you do in the Pokemon community, um, and, and why you're on the show today. Yeah, so uh, I'm Lewis. I guess I'm here to talk about a wide variety of stuff, but mainly what <laughs> I do is I'm a YouTuber. I uh, I make a lot of tweets about archival and preservation efforts that uh, I do and the rest of my team. Uh, I also talk about the staff and the production of Pokemon, like how the how the sausage is made effectively. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm just also an artist, editor, designer, etc. Cool. Very nice. Yes, we know each other, I guess, from Twitter mostly. I mean, mm-hmm. I think that's where I mostly we've... know you from Twitter. Definitely, yeah, where we've that's made where contact I mean. the most. Yeah, I... I feel like I've interacted with most people on, on Twitter because it's mm-hmm. where I'm most active, unfortunately. Nowadays. Yeah, I think the, I the archival aspect of all of this is that's what stands out to me the most. That's mostly when you came onto my radar. Uh, I I feel like I use your because um, I guess there's the archival system, but you all, but you've also made the archiving of various Pokemon assets and art pieces. Um, I think also mm-hmm. music as well. You I mean, those are available on YouTube. Um, but all of the stuff that you that you preserve is also really easily available via Google Drive, and yes. I, I think I think I think that is just I don't know that 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 is genius that that works so well for me as a creator, someone who is regularly trying to access Pokemon assets. Um, I find it I find it refreshing. It's and it's useful, right? It's it's not just Definitely. yeah. Mm-hmm. How, yeah how did, no, I'm uh, I'm super glad to hear. Yeah. How, how did you get started with all of that? So, because this is a, it's always a really funny story because a lot of people have made the like incorrect assumption that I like went into this with the idea of like, oh, I'm going to do this. I was working on a video and I was like, damn, I have no idea where to find this or this or this. So I, I've had like a personal collection of stuff for a while. And then I was like, mm. 
what if I just like share this with people? So I kind of built that, I opened the Google Drive, and then it has transformed dramatically since then over the last two, almost two years. I started the archive in October of 22. Okay. How many nice. people, how many people work on it? Um, so it's only me that I, I'm the only person that directly works on the archive, but, uh, a lot of friends and, uh, volunteers, they will occasionally just throw in, maybe it's one image. Uh, sometimes we have people shout outs to flair, for example, flair is my friend that does, uh, all of the work for Pokemon masters. Uh, cause I, I don't have time to play and understand every single Pokemon game, especially the ones that are constantly updating. So yeah, right. it's really nice to have a bunch of friends that are, um, willing to just give away their time to help out with parts of the franchise that I, I kind of can't. Right. And it's like, you guys do totally free stuff, right? Like it's just all volunteer kind of yeah. trying to preserve it. it really Pretty cool. awesome. How, how often yeah, are you making like paywalled or anything? Like yeah. That. Stuff like that. Yeah. No, I love the idea that like, you know, that's kind of what I feel like the Pokemon community needs. You know, I feel like we're a pretty divided community on a lot of things. So it's cool to have a physical or I guess it's digital, but you get what I mean. A thing you can see that yeah. is like from collaborated efforts. Yeah. And, and the older I get, right, I've been playing Pokemon for my whole life. I'm 30 right now. I feel like I've been playing it since I was, what, I don't know, four or five. Um, and the older I get and the older my older video games get, and the less accessible those older video games get, I start to realize that there's so many people who don't have access to not only the games, but also a lot of the magic that comes out of the music and the art and all of these assets that you are preserving. I mean, there's plenty of other people who try to preserve these things, um, but I think it's, at the end of the day, it's a group effort and it all just drives uh, the community forward or it, and it creates opportunities for new people. Um, and, and, and legacy fans, right? People who have been around from the very beginning. Uh, so yeah, it's, mm -hmm. I, th I think For it's sure. a great, I think it's a great project. So it, it is public, right? So we can put a link in the description for people to access yes, the Google everything Drive. Everything on the archive is, yeah, everything in the archive is totally public. I will say that there is a secret project. I don't know if I'm going to get into it here. Uh, you can hint it if you want. Anywhere, really, but uh there is going to be an I'll, everything from the archive will be getting moved to a different website i'll say that much um that is we've been building it for the last month i would say it is kind of ready to be put out there but there's still a few things that we need to work out but it's going yeah. incredibly well and it is better than a google drive i'll say that that's exciting mm, that's super that exciting, that's exciting. <laughs> website i love i love that. hopefully it's going to answer a lot of community problems i'll say that <laughs> okay that's, that's good, good. That's very good. That's great. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, and you also make a lot of YouTube videos or have made a lot of YouTube videos in the past. I think it's been about two years since your yeah, main Yeah, we, we saw your tweet. Yeah, yeah probably. Don't agree with the present tense. What I yeah. <laughs> uh, But, like, like I, I don't know, like, are you... A while. Yeah, do you, do you plan to keep making new videos? Obviously, there's a huge uh, lift when oh. it comes to making, uh, you know, vi just videos in general. I feel like Twitter is such a great place to... Like there's a low barrier to entry when it comes to a tweet, right? You, I mean, mm -hmm. you go back to this, right? You could throw out ideas and it, it takes yeah. no time at all uh, where a YouTube video, a proper YouTube video that is going to perform well and be worth your time um, and reach a lot of people, that, that can be really difficult to achieve. Uh, but do you have any, yeah, just tell, tell us about your, your YouTube projects. Uh, well... YouTube is really, really difficult for me because I am such a perfectionist. Yeah. There is a lot of stuff that I want to talk about. Currently, I'm in the... Because as you can, you know, as you pointed out, I haven't uploaded in two years. Yeah. The reason for that is... And that's not a diss. Because there's like... No, no, <laughs> I, I fully accept it, okay? It is what it is. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> the problem is that there's so many things that I want to talk about that don't really fit in like long form content. And yeah. they're not like good enough for short... Like they're too good for short form content. So that's been really hard to handle. Um, mm. I I do know what I want to do. It's just a case of like getting it done visually. Like having every video yeah. be better than the last one was incredibly tiring for a while. Mm. I feel like I've kind of not necessarily peaked, but I've gotten to like the height that I want to be at with quality. Now it's more so about trying to make every video you know unique, whether that's aesthetically in terms of topic. Uh, it, it's it's very difficult. <laughs> Absolutely, and your, obviously your your videos are like super well done though like i always enjoyed watching them 
when you were putting them out, I was like, dang, there's yeah. a lot of quality that goes into this. And uh, I totally get what you're saying because of that. You can see it well, in the videos. So. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it and, shows, too, in the performance as well. I mean, yeah, you know. for listeners, uh, the most recent Lutu video has over 500,000 views, which is a feat I haven't even achieved uh, as someone who's primarily um, active on YouTube. That that's that's crazy. That's that's a that's a huge mm-hmm. that's a huge um, achievement. Um, the response is always amazing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, like, how am I gonna top it? How am I gonna do 500 <laughs> million? Like that's yeah, that's at least uh, how I think. <laughs> yeah, I I think just the direction of going down. Hey, let's make all of these videos feel distinct is probably a bit healthier than what I've been doing up until that point, which was yeah. trying to make every video better than the last one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Definitely. Very cool. Um, so I don't know if you want to get into it now, but uh, yeah, dude. So you <laughs> I don't. I feel like so it's you... not as hostile. You just wanted to start off with like. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Just be like, okay. We're Listen, he challenged me. Justy's, Lu- Justy's Justy's challenged scared, me. so he's trying to like first like humanize himself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah. I just want to have talk a wife him, and a dog, and he's I, hedging I, his bets. Okay. Yeah, That's I fine. make yeah. a great coffee. I'm a human. Um, <laughs> so okay, so tell me this. Mm-hmm. You don't think oh, God. when do, okay? Let, how, how am I even gonna phrase this? Because there's there, there, for those who don't know, I like to share ideas on Twitter. Ideas <laughs> on Twitter. Um, mm-hmm. some but people, you don't point out that they're ideas. They are ideas. They're obviously yeah, ideas. Like, you trolls already though. debating you. They're already. <laughs> uh, they're always ideas, right? This is why he didn't, fire. Me, he didn't make me the moderator. For so this if I days. wanted to go on 4chan and post my ideas on 4chan, people will call them leaks and people will call them rumors. Why would you do it on 4chan? You could I wouldn't. I do it on Pokemon Twitter YouTubers on my own profile. It's public. Make 10 minute videos off of them. So I could make 10. I could do that. I could do that. But I get plenty of exposure here on Twitter. It's fun. Anyways, so, all right. Let's just, I, I don't even, I haven't even thought about this in a month or so, right? So, my mm-hmm. idea was tw- in 2024, Pokemon X and Y could receive a faithful remake to correspond with the Pokemon Legends ZA game, right? The idea is uh, to kind of pair the new Legends uh, game with a, basically, whatever, you know, uh, basically a faithful remake but I was replaying X and Y, and I'm like, these games are beautiful. And I remember people playing. I mean, I, I w- what is on screen right now is just footage of upscaled, um, at a, uh, it's uh, X and Y footage. It's just X and Y at a, with a high, at a higher resolution. I think also without the outlines, maybe as well. Uh, and the games look nice. They look nicer than BDSP, in my opinion. Um, so. I don't know. I I don't really know if at, at this point, a couple months later, after you know, beyond two days after, after the reveal of Legend ZA, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I've had some time to think about this. I still think it's a great idea, um, and I think what what I really just what I really just uh, I guess get caught up on is like I feel like Pokemon eventually needs to just like start giving us access to these older games. And I feel like they try. They ba- I think what BDSP was was a way for them to try to get us put a sixty dollar price tag on an old game, right? There obviously mm-hmm. were Works. new, there there were new improvements and, and additional gameplay features in BDSP. Um, but I think the presentation of the games is really what. I don't know. It's like if you're gonna make something that's so faithful, it's got to be good. And I feel like if that's really the the if that's the selling point. That's what BDSP was. It was like a faithful remake. You're going to get a faithful remake. Just give us an upscaled port of these older games. Um, I don't know. I Yeah. Yeah. What, what are you thinking? So it's, uh, well, so those screenshots of XY are really interesting. So the one on the right, I remember it's from a Reddit thread um, about uh, having XY running with reshade enabled mm. on yeah. Citra and like completely lineless. And I did something similar. I don't think I'll ever release these. I posted them in the chat. Um, I don't think I'll ever release these because I don't have the time to, but I was uh, working on, so all of those screenshot comparisons that I posted, this is uh, XY running at 4K with- Oh, beautiful. Uh, like completely, completely redrawn textures uh, and a bunch of like reshaped presets. So you can do that on your own for the most part. Uh, the thing about BDSP is like, God, I don't know how much I want to get into this because yeah, let's uh, get into it. This is what we're here. Video that I've been working on for three years. <laughs> no, the problem yeah, with BDSP, and I've posted 
I have posted about this before, is that it is a game that is like built to pander to like a very specific audience that we kind of facilitated and said, okay, this is like okay. And then when it came out, we weren't happy with it. Yeah. So it's really hard, I think, for them to judge how much people are gonna appreciate like an XY style game like that. Um faithfulness isn't really the problem with BDSP. It's more so its commitment to that idea. Cause um, like Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's a mix of what what you're saying. I do think the issue with BDSP specifically I, I do sorry, I do think that the I think I think um the fact that BDSP is faithful is an issue with uh the Gen 4 games specifically because I think the Gen 4 games have a lot of issues that were improved later in that generation or really mm -hmm. just solved in platinum, right? And these are these are issues that are solved rather than uh, stylistic changes or narrative uh, shifts, right? Like in Emerald, yeah. there's a different focus on a there's a focus on a different legendary, right? But I think Ruby and Sapphire stand alone as great games alongside Emerald. Where I think Diamond and Pearl had a lot of, I'm pretty sure the games were initially delayed because of uh, production issues, um, and I feel like Diamond and Pearl are just in a lot in most ways just lesser versions to, uh, compared to Platinum. Um, so, th and, and obviously this has always been an issue with remakes. They always remake the base games, right? We've seen that with all the remakes, but not always because I like, not technically, because I think a lot of the features in the, in, in a lot of the remakes that we get are borrowed from, you know, crystal version, from emerald version, from yellow version. We, we do see that. And I don't really see that with BDSP. So just on that one point of, um, yeah, on that one point of, Faithful remakes not being an issue. I do think it's it's an issue with Gen 4. I don't think it would be an issue with Black and White, for example. See, the mm. problem is like, when you when you make something faithful, there's like a reason to do that. There's like an audience mm. that you're expecting to grab with that. That's and point. Most, most remakes, just in general, like if we expand the scope outside of Pokemon, uh, most remakes tend to be pretty faithful. A uh, Thousand Year Door remake just came out recently, and that is incredibly faithful minus a few fairly small things and that's what people want that's what people really yeah. crave super mario rpg is another really good example of a recent remake um mm -hmm. pokemon is kind of unique in that its remakes from the beginning have established a precedent of let's add a ton of new things let's add everything from the last game yeah so no that's absolutely. what makes bdsp so so strange no, that's absolutely true. Uh, like Pokemon set it themselves up, Game Freak set themselves up that their remakes aren't the same. They they go above and beyond what a traditional remake actually means. That's a great point. And then <laughs> basically, what they had to do is backtrack with BDSP, which then you know makes makes the core audience, makes the fan base be like, this isn't really what we've been used to for twenty years. Yeah. So that's that's yeah, a great it point. Also, it varies too. I mean, there's varying. Uh, Types elements, of remakes, I guess you could say. Yeah, types of remakes. Yeah, there's always like a sliding scale, right? You get like super faithful, like basic, like practically ports, and then you get mm -hmm. like entire like reimaginings like Ratchet and Clank or Pokemon in a lot of instances. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I would rather just... At this point, I feel like ports are so great because what they could do and what they've shown to do on the 3DS is that they what they can do is unlock mystery events and all these features that were locked away to various like apparatus whether it's or like like accessories like physical accessories like e-reader i'm thinking of uh like e-reader battles and e-reader encounters and e-reader items and stuff um mm -hmm. in in the in the gen 3 games like you can unlock all of those and make those accessible either in the post game or just throughout your adventure you can make those accessible in an emerald port right you can give us access to the faraway island to get mew right you can allow us to you know, battle Ho Oh in Lugia in Gen 3, which at, at this point, to me, as someone who's been playing Pokemon forever, I don't play ROM hacks. I don't, I don't, and this isn't like a judgment thing, but I just don't do that. It, and, and I don't like, I don't like, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? I don't know. Like, I don't unlock those things for myself. I play Pokemon games on just like, on just like the, the native, uh, native hardware. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, if I were to get access to those ported games, uh, like a Gen Three port, um, and then all the, all those events are unlocked to me. Like that all feels like new content. Yeah. yeah, I think ports are deeply fascinating in a Pokemon context because the first few ports that we did get for Gen One and Two, there are some 
cool things that so they made changes that they had to make for example like uh changing jinx's sprite changing uh like flashing lights on like thunderbolt for gen one sure uh mm -hmm. the problem is that those and also they added uh wireless transfer and like compatibility with bank that's really cool but that is just taking stuff out of a save file it's not as difficult as it uh might seem it's a feat i would say but it's not like you know, it's, they didn't hugely like uphold the game for for a port job. The problem is even those Gen One and Two ports are still lacking in a lot of like color options. I don't think you can play the Gen One ports in color, and that's kind of why I'm not against ports, but I'm very weary with them because it's like okay, now you can play, and I'm I'm probably going to talk about this in the new video about the Sugimori art and just how Pokemon preserves their own stuff. Yeah, but mm -hmm. yeah, you could play Gen One on the 3DS, but you couldn't play it in color. Which is like interesting. Which is insane to me. That, that's so yeah. Wild so so yeah. I just want to reiterate to kind of see if I'm following along. So you're saying that you know even so like the I guess the goal of a port is to almost like what I care about preserve an older game and allow it to be played by newer audiences. But what you're saying is that it's not doing a full enough job to actually preserve the whole picture or what was actually available to like a lot of players, right? A huge portion of the player base. Um, yeah, I, yeah and that's interesting. I think that should probably, I, I don't think that that should be like high expectation either. I think that should be the bare minimum. That no, I that makes sense. Games in color. That like makes obviously sense. Obviously there's things that they that they have to account for, like the rating, like Jinx, like the, uh, like the screen flashing. I think those are things that are totally fine to change. But right. uh, things like, again, playing the games in color is like such a huge deal to me. And I just don't know why that wasn't included for Gen 1. Stadium is another really good example. That is on Nintendo Switch Online, and you can't interact with eighty percent of the content in that game because you can't yeah, connect to Yeah, that's that's so. And true. they they release that and they just put that out there, and that is incredibly Insane. disappointing. That is yeah. that is Gen One's post game, and you just mm -hmm. can't you can't access it. Yep, that's crazy. It is, yeah, I, it is tough. I not to change topics a little bit, but just with what you were saying as well. Um, how do you feel about Pokemon's preservation of things? Because I know, like, when you're talking about having your own archive and um and which i so appreciate you for um it's like when i think about pokemon and preserving things like the beta pokemon and all of that it's like i wish that they would preserve their stuff but they kind of don't and that's kind of what yeah, you're doing it's... you know <laughs> so it's it's like a weird <laughs> like you know limbo i guess but yeah I don't know how you feel about it it's kind of uh scatter shot so the the Kensugi Mori art is so funny, and it's why I'm making a whole video on it after we scanned the uh, GS Zukan booklet like last year, because mm -hmm. this is like the artwork that everybody loves, that everybody points to, that is like this is so emblematic of the golden years of Pokemon, like the the time when this series was the most popular and like the cultural zeitgeist, mm -hmm. and they've made such little effort to properly preserve that they haven't made any like dedicated pokemon art books they've not made when they release like concept art for new games it's spread across like three japanese pre-order books it's yeah. Yeah. insane uh yeah no, they, I, I would pay so yeah. much money to get art books like that i would i would yeah, pay, i would they, buy them. They, they, they do exist but it's like mm -hmm. it's so like like five years they'll release like one art book that has like 50 pieces of, of artwork in it it's like this isn't this isn't enough this series is gigantic they have the money they have the incentive and they also mm -hmm. they shill a lot of that older stuff and yeah. this yeah. isn't just about like uh kanto you know nostalgia it's like gigantamax pikachu that is so clearly based off of uh mm -hmm. yeah. pikachu's earliest mm -hmm. revisions why like i i can't engage with the content that that is like based off of right I, like I it's even... so it's so alienating yeah no that's so true that's so real it feels like the negligence and i even yeah, what's it? What's the terrestrial up? hat for the ghost sprite. Yeah, that's one of yeah. my favorite yeah. OG references. Or even in well, Scarlet yeah, and Violet, you can't buy the game that has that anymore. So right. It's just like, well, yeah. Lost to time. That is bizarre. Mm -hmm. I even or feel like Bluetooth. I feel that. I feel that negligence, even in Scarlet and Violet, like with the new Pokemon that come out, like we only like there are so many forms, and variants and. Yeah, of Pokemon that don't even have official Sugimori art. I guess it's not even Sugimori art. It's just, you know, official art um, in that Pokemon style that we're familiar with. And mm -hmm. it, it feels like there's no rhyme or reason to which Pokemon get an extra 
you know, get, get an extra piece of art or not. Like, I'm pretty sure the triple the D- Dunsparce does not have art. No, it doesn't. But wh- which one is it? There, There's, like, something. Oh, Palafin has its own art. Yeah. yeah. But it's, like, it's, I mean, maybe that makes sense, it's, but it's literally just Finizen. It's really weird. God, Palafin's own art is, like, I think that is the perfect example. So it's like, just uh, make it different. It doesn't even have a different pose. <laughs> Well, the the thing with that is so funny because uh, the was it hero form, the mm-hmm. to get that art in high quality, we had to uh, go to because obviously when they upload all of the new Pokemon art for like a new generation, they put it on the Japanese Pokedex website. Yeah, it's fairly right. small; it's like five hundred pixel. Like there's no detail, uh, mm-hmm. and it's just wild to me because how we ended up getting the high quality art is we had to go to the CDAC presentation in Japan last year. We had to find the website. We had to know that they were doing it. We had to download the, po- the PowerPoint. We had to convert that to a zip file to scrub through all the assets. And then we randomly stumbled across a single piece of high quality art and it was Palafin's art. And it's like, why is why do we have to go this deep to get high quality art of like, a, like one of the most popular Pokemon of the last generation? I really mm-hmm. don't get it. It's yeah. And this is just like, it, it's so, it blows my mind. <laughs> I really no, it's, don't get it's it. insane. It's insane. That, I, that's why I asked the question because I feel the same about it. It's just like, why? Like, we would never have the art if you didn't go and do that, or somebody doesn't go and do that. We would never see it other than. I mean, now they've started putting it on like the Pokemon website, like Pokemon.com, like they have it, but the quality of it is not great. Um, it, it, but yeah, but so there's just, just like, forms that don't, don't even on. get their own art, period. Like, not even high quality. They don't even get variant like a variant of their art gen 9 had so yeah, many different right. forms and that was the focus i feel like of this decks like there was so much emphasis put on these like on these like quirky little forms and they don't even i don't know it, it, it when i do think about it i'm like i get frustrated because i'm i don't know what their reasoning is for being that negligent you know like you're right they do have the resources they have the interest um and maybe it doesn't even matter but if it doesn't matter then why do we get official art for any of them yeah, right. No, for sure. I I think that artwork. I mean, the original purpose of artwork was to show what these Pokemon would look like because the sprites were designed first. They were a mm-hmm. representation for merchandise and for promotional art. Just going forward, now that that has shifted, um, I I I don't see any like, you know, that priorities also haven't changed. Right. They still want to make this stuff for merch for for the future. It is telling that there's more Dreamworld or like Global Link or corporate styled artwork for all of these Pokemon. Like yeah. every form has uh, Dreamworld art. That's, That's interesting. Yeah, whereas the Sugimori style, we don't have that for the Dunsparce mm-hmm. with three segments or um, Family of Three Mouseholds. So it's, it's all, like I said, it's just scattershot. There's no yeah. rhyme or reason. It's probably something I can I can ask about and try and like figure out an answer to, but yeah, it's 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 rough it's really rough yeah, yeah i never i never even thought about that how you just put it with the with the dream world art since we don't have a name for it still to this day um but they they use it just for promotional stuff and it's interesting that they do have more of them even they're just changing like little things on their faces just so that they can promote them more for merch and all of that it's very mm-hmm. it is telling i agree yeah there's they put all of them on the japanese pokemon center so we have at least one for every single one but i'm like mm-hmm. scrolling the archive now and there's like four pieces of also awesome art and the whole point is that this is like consumable artwork to put on like merchandise tags and such yeah mm-hmm. uh but like to get a lot of those we had to scan uh all of the like the the dream world art stickers that came out and then we had to like put them in the archive and cut them out and it yeah it's a whole, whole yeah thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for me it's just po- pokemon for me a lot of times like People are big gamers and all that, but uh, for me, it's just like I love the artwork, and I always have. Like, just as an a amateur artist and someone who really enjoys art, I just mm-hmm. since I was a kid, I liked looking yeah. at the Pokemon. Like they they capture my. You want to see their anatomy, right? You want to see how they function in the world. You want to see them in different poses. You want to see how the yeah. artist intended them to look. That's mm-hmm. the, that's what I like about the games the most as well is just seeing the sprite work or the the modeling. Mm-hmm. You know, so. It, for me, it's a huge deal, and to see all of the artwork is a whole new thing. So it's, mm. I don't know, I don't know if Pokemon values it as much as some of their fans do, you know. Yeah, but there's, no. We're such a wide variety of of uh, fans, I guess, or whatever, the, mm-hmm. the fans' interests, so. I find myself doing the same thing with, like, 
TCG art. Like, I, I mm -hmm. buy Pokemon cards probably more than I should. And I don't play TCG. I just literally love looking at the art of these Pokemon, like, collecting the art of these Pokemon. And um, I, I found, like, that's something I'm always craving is, like, I wish I could, instead of holding the card this close to my face, you know, yeah go and like see high quality art and they they do have it in fairness for some uh tcg arts but definitely not most of them which obviously would be like a ton of work because how many cards come out in a year um yeah. but it but is cool thing. to see them in different lights i yeah. guess you know yeah, yeah. for sure uh, I want to lose, like lose, like trying to do that, <laughs> like trying to yeah, get everything. Yeah. TCG just... stuff is a pain in the ass because I don't sure. play it. I haven't bought a Pokemon card since I was ten, so I just don't like. There's so much to, there's so much work. There's so much work to do. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm happy with game. the new TCG like mobile game that's supposed to be coming out later this year. I'm, I'm hopeful, like you know, that will make you know. But I think the artwork on there is supposed to be exclusive to that game. Did they say that or not? I feel like they said that. But maybe uh, there's going to be exclusive cards, but okay. we, I, it's probably going to end up being built in Unity, so ripping everything okay. is probably going to be really yeah. easy. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, see, I'm I'm super excited about that because it's like, ooh, there's you know artwork, and they even showed like you kind of exploring the artwork in it, like being able to zoom in and see little details. That is so mm. exciting to me. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. The only other instances of that happening, uh, well, recently, I say recently, over the last year, they made a. There's a Japanese Instagram account that officially posts like uncropped versions of the artwork. Right, right. Yeah. And some artists like uh, Toshinao Aoki, uh, Hideki Ishikawa, uh, Tokia, and like a few others, they will like just post the uncropped artwork to like Twitter or social media for their portfolio. So mm -hmm. that's how we have most of ours. Right. Um, okay. I'm going to upload like an example of that. Nice. Yeah, so um, I do want to pivot to this a little bit. Um, you mentioned it earlier. Uh, Love that one. Yeah, so this. Oh yeah, the armor is just so nice. Dusty, sorry. <laughs> what are you guys like... looking at the picture? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he it, the one. It's an armor rouge one. Did you guys send it to yeah. the chat? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that is. I did. Uh, do you want me to send it to the trust so you can get it? No, I'll click it. Hold on. The layout's getting a little <laughs> messed up. Oh, that's too high quality. I think. I don't know if I can <laughs> actually show this. There you go. Here we Super go. Pretty. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Oh. Yeah. It makes you appreciate the Pokemon so much. It's the much best well. Charcadet evolution. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with that. Yeah. But... No, Seraledge is better. True. Yeah, we got two Warmerouge in the We're chat. Two, two and two. Ledge, it seems. Two and two. Even. Maybe, Look, okay, my... maybe me and Luto are going to be the same side after everything. It's true. I, <laughs> I love this art, but I he does look like a guy walking out of a door. And that... <laughs> this is like he's leaning too much towards human in this. I love Nagi Misos. Sure. Really funny. To me. Yeah. Um. <laughs> here, I I do want to switch over to this. So th about a year ago, um, I don't even know what the full context of this is, right? Um, but you had, I don't know. This this is your tweet. This is like I'm just like this is like a news video. I'm just like reading someone else's Twitter page. <laughs> Even though he's on the podcast right now, uh, don't worry, I get that a lot. Yes, specifically. So. Yes, yeah, Soul gets it too. Uh, mm -hmm. So, anyways, actually, do you just want to give context for what this is? Basically, there's a you made some sort of discovery, or you found some sort of uh, original version of how the you know original 251 Pokemon were supposed to look, based on how Ken Sugimori originally drew these Pokemon and their original colors. Um, I don't know, just just, just uh, for listeners, can you give some context for what this is? Okay, so I this is the next video. I don't think I, I think I've formally announced it yet, but this is the next video that I am working on, uh, a big breakdown of this whole event because it goes way deeper than this tweet. But the short of it is is that uh, Ken Sugimori's original artwork of the original, what, like 251 Pokemon, which is the green artwork, the art, or the artwork for red and green, the artwork for blue, and the artwork for Gold, Silver, Crystal is really, really rough. Um, the preservation of it online is remarkably poor, and nobody has made like some sort of public resource for all of them. And for the most part, especially the artwork from Japanese Blue or Red and Blue in the West, uh, it was really, really poorly preserved. Like all of the scans online are from like Western print guides, and mm -hmm. what we noticed uh, was that the colors are drastically different in some of these pieces. Uh, this hadn't really, this had been talked about, but it wasn't, you know, necessarily like cataloged. So 
when a member of my community who has worked on a lot of stuff for the archive, Chris, he came forward and he was like, hey, I have the Japanese um, gold and silver Pokedex book, and I'm just going to scan it. And when he was sending me these, I was like, these look really different to anything I'd seen on Bulbapedia or Pokemon DB or any other site for the blue art. All right. And there's, we don't know why, but in some instances, there are, there's artwork that looks really deep fried for lack of a better term. Yeah. And then there is artwork that is on the right, as you can see with that Tauros. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, we don't know the reason for it, but it's pretty clear that the ones on the right are Sugimori's original intent. One thing that they did do was they provided us scans of Eevee, Flareon, Jolteon, and Vaporeon from Sugimori's masters. Right. Uh, like, uh, I think it was 2018, and we also scanned that booklet as well. When you say and... his masters, you mean like original art pieces? Yeah. Like so sketching? From... Yeah, so from our understanding, um, Sugimori photocopied everything that he had worked on probably after 96. I'm recently I was trying to figure out when some of the ships were drawn because it's just crazy. There's so much. Um mm -hmm. but at some point Sugimori photocopied everything and then sent those off to publications. Mm. He sent those off to uh like like for flyers and, and, and such. And all this is to say is that there are two different versions of the blue artwork out there, which is really, really weird. And we don't know why that is. And we got a scan, we got a really high quality scan of like pretty much all uncropped uh, versions that are closer to his original intent. Yeah. Which is clear because you look at his original masters that were practically like the photocopies that were rescanned officially. You look at um, certain TCG cards. You look at uh, even like the red and green, like or the red and blue 3DS themes. Like they have these colors. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's pretty, oh, it's pretty, that's like, interesting. pretty night and day. I mean, yeah. it also makes sense with the with the times, you know, like mm -hmm. back in the late '90s, early 2000s, like that when they scanned them, it looked like this, <laughs> you know, like not um, the same, I guess. Yeah. yeah, the quality is the quality is weird because it's like the reason why the quality is so bad on a lot of these is because nobody had probably scanned them before. Like even the the Western stuff, like it's not even a color issue. It's that the scans have just not been properly released before. Yeah. There's been, yeah. as you are showing here, there's been tons of discrepancies with Pokemon artwork before. Like they've changed Mighty Anna's nose at some point. They changed mm -hmm. Chikorita. Yeah. I made another tweet uh, last year when we scanned the Cafe Eevee booklets. Sugimori digitally altered uh, Espeon and Umbreon and presumably a lot of other drawings as well before Gold and Silver came out. Yeah. There's a lot of this. I think, and, er yeah. Yeah. It, it, I think early Pokemon, from my memory, there was. There's plenty of uh, instances that might not even be related to the official art. It might really just be like the way uh, certain things were depicted in a video in the video game, and then how then they were depicted in later generations. I think of the coloration of Gligar and Sneasel. Uh, Sneasel especially, I think, was originally like blue and and uh, and brown when it first debuted. And that I don't yeah. know mm. if that's related to what this you know what this is with Sugimori's original intent, or if it was just a, you know, I don't know. I don't know if that's directly related. I mean, related. They, update, they updated them, you know, just, I don't know why they decided yeah. that yeah, this, this should are, be and like And we've this. seen that as recently There's as, like, stuff. we've seen that as yeah. recently as, I think it was last generation, Combuskin's shiny form got changed uh, pretty drastically, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, the shinies are definitely different than the original concept. I love it and I hate it because I want to keep the old like preserved, but I'm happy that they're changing it a little yeah. bit. You know, it's like it's weird, it's, but the problem yeah, is that they don't really preserve it. <laughs> That's the thing. The, the, there's a lot of like, so like artwork is one thing, but there are so many design discrepancies between like even going as far down as like Gen five. There mm -hmm. are so many things that they changed. I remember between like Gen one and I think Pinball. Um, they just randomly drew Poliwhirl with like gloves instead of mittens. Oh wow! Like half oh, of yeah. the sprites just have like normal ass that, like yeah. human hands, and it's just yeah. so it's so odd. Uh, like Abra had like a weird rat tail in Gen One that they got rid of. Um, oh Atkins yeah, right here. Have, oh, the Bobak the... used to have like a uh, stripes on its back. It's so weird. <laughs> yeah, the brown on Pikachu. I love the details though. Yeah, uh, I. Uh... The original Sugimori art is is gorgeous. It's mm -hmm. it's great. Yeah, I think I My so. Favorite is still the Kata stuff. If I can, so I think the 
I, I remember also we don't have to get into it. I don't you know, we don't it's this is like a you know it's a positive show. But a lot of people had a lot of criticism with this discovery that was made and I feel like it was really a uh, a lot of people had a reaction even myself right where it almost feels like what is that phenomenon it feels like almost like an attack on like your actual memory your very real the emotional Mandela effect. <laughs> personal memory right in your mind whether they're real or not we all grew up with the you know quote unquote incorrect art Right, I mean, we all is a very broad. Stroke, I think we but, all. Yeah. I think I think most no, we, people. No, we all did. I think that is. I think we all did. They, they were using like the uh, more accurate colors, and then they would like next thing that some part of the brand would release, they would like change it back. They had no idea what they were doing. Yeah, um, yeah. And, yeah. And when I think are, when like, I think of old Pokemon, people, I like wild. this Tauros is what I think of. I do not think of this brown Tauros. Never have I seen that, except then I look at the card and except I go, then you get the card I have like, oh. seen that card. I think I owned that card, right? But you could chalk it up to like the lighting of the of Did this. you think that the card was wrong? Were you like, oh, 100%. Have the colors on this card. Yeah. <laughs> so I think Just it's. So he kept that card because he thought he had an error card. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like trying to auction it. Um, right. What I should have done before this conversation is pulled out my old uh, Prima Guides. Um, because I have yeah, them too. Because that's that is what I looked at growing up, right? I'd play my game mm -hmm. and I'd look at the prima, the what is a prima prima guide, um, and that was you know, but you know before Bulbapedia and and Cerebi, before I could go online to look things up, um, yeah, I would just use the prima guides that I got from uh, from Blockbuster, and <laughs> and it had all of this art that apparently isn't uh, accurate to how it was originally depicted by Ken Sugimori, so. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I think this is a really cool discovery. Um, so are all of these, uh, yeah, so are all of, yeah, so what 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 from these are available in your, um, yeah, it, w what are available in your archive? So the problem with these is that we need to cut them all out of like really high quality scans and we're figuring out sure. a way to do that whilst also presenting like the true, like, because here's the thing, right? This is a series of tweets and in hindsight, it's probably, it's way harder for me to like articulate how much, uh, like how far down this rabbit hole goes. No, totally. Uh, and I, I've, I'm, I keep learning more stuff. I think we might have figured out there's some weird stuff with the red and green artwork as well as of the last week, which is oh, really? concerning. Wow. I'm like constantly having to update this video and it's why it's taken so long. Mm -hmm. um, the short of it is, is that none of this has been released yet because we need to figure out a way to properly cut it out whilst preserving like all of the... Uh, the things that come with Sugimori's drawings, because the line art in particular, it's, uh, you know, it, these, well, the artwork for these games specifically uh, were hand painted with watercolor. Mm -hmm. So there's obviously like discrepancies where the watercolor will go outside of the art yeah. or the line art, because that's just how it works. So I try right. to figure out a way to like get all of that done, maybe automate the process, and also like try and figure out um, how we want to like properly present this information. I mean, this could you, could you do versions? Could stuff. Could you have like one folder that includes everything with the line art um, and then have a, a one version that includes maybe like like almost like a gradient, like maybe there's like a bubble around them or it's not perfect, but it includes all of the paint that would have been on the page. And then, you know, yeah. something that I care about, and I think this is another, another piece of criticism that you received last year, uh, was that there should also be space to preserve um, what a lot of people assume or you know, thought for 25 years was the correct art. Yeah, so there's a few problems with that. Uh, the no the first one is that it is, so how do you, so if I was to describe, or if you were to describe this art to me, like the two different types of art, how would you describe them? How would you categorize them? Um, yeah, I would say this is the one that I remember from my childhood, and this is how I, I mean, <laughs> I, I think it actually depends <laughs> on the Pokemon because, this is my nostalgia. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is, this is correct, real. and this is, uh, you know, <laughs> in, insert whatever opposing political party scapegoat I want to call this. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that's fake the, news. <laughs> yeah, fake the news. The reality is that it's, it's so hard to categorize both of them uh, in a way that's like, oh, this is the artwork from, let's say that this is the artwork from 1996. Well, this artwork was also used in 1996, right? Sure, but uh, you didn't see it. It was hidden. Yeah, exactly. Like, I guess so it's really, really hard. Just call it to, nostalgic. Um, <laughs> true. It's really, really hard to categorize them. Yeah. The second yeah. issue is there's no real source for 
the original 100 because the benefit of gs zukon is that for the most part what is that all of these are so this is the the pokedex book for gold and silver where okay. all these come from uh this contains all 250 not 251 because pikachu uses the rena green art for some reason in this yeah but it contains all of the artwork for all of these pokemon in a pretty uncropped way like there's very very rarely will you get like text over it or something like that the problem is that every other source that has all of the pokemon is cropped in some way which makes it really hard to get like a high quality scan of all of that artwork with those colors and then categorizing it is also really difficult and i would like to do it but the problem is like we don't have the resources to do that currently um all of the other sources that were posting sugimori artwork stopped posting publicly or have just dried up mm. um even after yeah. we've like reached out to them it's really rough and i would love to do it uh again i think it's probably easier to do it on the new solution that we're proposing uh for the new uh website let's say but yeah, yeah it's it's hard but it is something that i want to do it's just i need the money and the, the time to do it effectively right so. of course totally. it's so much it's so much i See, can't imagine i think like it's funny dusty you know you're talking about like what you grew up with and all that and um see i i, I get to be like a little bit different on this because yeah, uh i didn't grow up with that i um didn't get into pokemon uh until fire and leaf green was my very first game so like when you were showing those new and old things to me the the ditto and the tauros especially stood out to me i i thought the one that you say you grew up with the original not the original one but you know the the one that we remember yeah like the orange one there yeah. on the left i like i see that and i go that doesn't look right to me wow. like because i'm used to how tauros is depicted in you know the, the games. uh games with color and and the anime yeah and stuff like that and like the ditto the ditto looks like it's white it, like, it does no, yeah Ditto's like a yeah you know purplish pink that's clearly incorrect but it was this so, color because I mean, it was know. like a watercolor you know that's no yeah. it wasn't that's the oh. thing though like no, no it, yeah but like that's how i th like obviously i i knew the yeah that's how you you that's yeah, how that's I, how you like assumed it was that i assumed yeah. it was like this because of the watercolor is what i mean yeah and yeah. that's i think the key thing about this is i'm really happy that it got people talking about sugimori's artwork again because yeah. like this happens a lot in other series uh, examples that I can think of off the top of my head are Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon. Mm -hmm. They have mm -hmm. had historically had like atrocious home quality, like uh, home releases with like terrible quality, inaccurate colors, like weird tints. I actually tweeted about this uh, last night. There was the uh, movie five for Pokemon. There was just a giant blue tint across the whole movie. And that's just how people <laughs> think that movie has looked. Um, right. But it was never like that in Japan and it never has yeah. been like that in Japan. So yeah. it's, again, the problem is uh, we are trying to like navigate the mess of like what companies have done. And this is the case for a lot of other series. And if the corporations aren't willing to help us, uh, we're going to have to do this work ourselves. Well, and yeah, yeah I think a lot of the criticism to how this sort of stuff is presented is reasonable. Uh, but at the end of the day, that's what I'm you know, yeah. making this video for to try and uh, clear up a lot of stuff. Ivysaur was the biggest one because everyone was like, no, Ivysaur is this color. Ivysaur is this color, but Ivysaur you go back, back throughout flopped. the history. Yeah, yeah, you go back throughout the history of Pokemon and Ivysaur has been a different color like every other game. And it's yeah, true. And the reason for that is not anything, you know, like bad. It's just, oh, for the anime, it was based off of Sugimori's red and green artwork. So mm -hmm. that's why it's one color. Or for the manga, you know, it's it just changes. It depends. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. Um, I'm looking at the blue tent thing that you referenced with the movie, and that is like insane. Like it's it's not subtle, you know. Yeah, like does he click click his uh, page? Um, click his page. It's like his last tweet. Yeah. Yeah, it's the most recent tweet that I made. It's crazy. Look at look like at like the looks comparison. Like it's late at night. Is this like real? the top is Japan yes. and the uh, bottom is the West release? See, I don't even remember that though. Yeah, yeah exactly. click over to the next one. The next one was like even crazier to me. Because this, I feel like me, as a, I'm a, as as a, a kid, kid, I feel like I just remember. saw the top one. Yeah. Well, as a kid, you actually saw the bottom one. <laughs> I wonder yeah. though, because I also saw it on like an old TV. I wonder if then that would show it differently. Your, your TV corrected it. <laughs> I'm being serious no, because like those TV distorted I mean, it even more. Yeah, but it was like a, v, a VHS, and it was like scroll down a little. Like look at his next tweet in the thread. 
Oh, on the thread. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Right like. No, no, no. That's, oh, that's the quote uh, tweet. Look, oh, okay. That one. Like, look at the difference in like Team Rocket on the roof there. Sure. Yeah, they, they just like that obliterates night. the lighting. They also <laughs> yeah, crushed insane. like all of the black detail in the movie and like drew See, over. See, yeah, it's I don't think I've seen the movie. Weird. I haven't seen this really movie, weird. but this, yeah, this looks ridiculous. That's yeah, so and most crazy. people just like they're like, what? Sailor Moon wasn't always meant to look red. Uh, Dragon Ball wasn't yeah. always meant to look yellow. It's like, yeah, unfortunately, like that's just how. For those, it was because film ages differently, and they haven't mm -hmm. bothered to like rescat on. Sure. Know, done, done various. So things. you think this is a With technical this, issue, like... and this isn't like so. The first thing I'm thinking about right now, during this era when I was growing up, right, obviously, as, I mean, as a kid, right, Pokemon, it's it's cutesy, it's Japanese, and then all of the American competition is like edgy and cool guy and very like you know boy masculine, and I. And the first thing I'm thinking is, oh, they made it darker to make it look more edgy. That's what it's I'm possible. thinking. It's possible. We right. don't know why, but the reality is that it's it looks like it's just underwater. It does. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and I think I think there's a lot to be gained from like localization stuff. Like I love the dub of the first movie so much. It is so good. Um mm. but it's a patently different movie to the Japanese version. And the cool thing is like, oh, we should probably try and make both of these things available. Unfortunately, if you live in the West, you probably have never seen the non blued out version of this, which is yeah. the problem. Mm -hmm. It's weird too, because like Dusty, you say like to make it more edgy, but like looking at a you know similar uh, you, the competition, if you will, looking at like Disney movies that released in the early two thousands, because that's you know around this came out in the early two thousands. Yeah. It's a lot of really brightly colored. Movies, I don't know if that was know, the competition like, though. I think the Tarzan, the Emperor's New. If it's kids' movies, you no, know. No, the competition is Yu-Gi-Oh. The competition is uh, what is the other one? Uh, what else? Like I don't know. What else did I play? I don't know. It's well, Yu-Gi-Oh like went movies. in the other direction. They they reduced. They did, the yeah. Contrast and yeah. they they censored like half of the the or the anime. So. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. That that was just a thought, Wild. right? Because I do think there can be sometimes intention behind this. And going back to, I don't know. I had I had another point about um. I don't know. I, I, I totally understand. Like, I thought it was, I think it's enlightening to hear, like, Lumi say, I don't remember, I don't remember any of these older scans from 1996 or whatever. The right? only one that looks kind of familiar to me is Ivysaur, but I think that's because, like Lutu said, like, yeah. they have changed Ivysaur's color yeah. so much. But, like, I the used... Diglett, a new one looks, or not the new one, but, you know, the yeah. new to you. New to us. One, the original one. <laughs> the new Lutu Actually looks us. correct to me. <laughs> yeah. The Diglett one is really funny because it's, like, tilted and, like, the bottom, uh, like, the dirt is, like, cut yeah. off properly. Mm -hmm. It's There's a lot of changes, and whether they were intentional or not, Wow. we kind of have to defer back to, like, the original artist's intent. And then you can... Then there will people that will like cry death of the artist, but the alternative is appealing to like literal rights holders and corporations that don't care about what you think. Yeah, won't release mm -hmm. this in high quality. So I think yeah. at the end of the day, right? Because most, I think all art, right? Once art is put out, it can. I feel like it's up to now whoever's consuming the art to define or to give it meaning, right? Because <laughs> it, it really, it you know, like you know, I've never met my favorite artists, but I listen to their music, and I in my mind associate it with all of my memories over the last 10 years or whenever the song came out right and for pokemon in this situation uh whether it's right or wrong or it was intentional or it was a technical mistake of the scanners right um at the end of the day i i just look at the old art with those washed out colors and that is what is most nostalgic for me to me i look at that and i go this is real it's not accurate to the intent right it didn't match up what was in the games, but that kind of also was a lot of the charm with these older Pokemon mediums where I would play oh, a game sure. and things would look different, right? I would play, I would watch the anime and that would look different. Then I'd go and look at the art and I'm like, oh, this is cool. It's from, it's from Japan. It's different, right? I don't know. Um, yeah, so I think, <laughs> I think it reveals that there's like levels to all of it because mm -hmm. in the, on the other end, there are people that have never played any of the GBA or Game Boy games uh you know outside of an emulator but if you play any of those games on console all of those games have drastically different sprites yeah, uh, yeah. drastically different colored sprites that look who was doing that recently the, how the artwork looks uh that was also me i was posting about it i deleted okay. it because people got mad at me 
Um, I think I saw. I do. I do agree with you though. That's crazy about people just growing up playing the emulator. And, but I was about to say the same thing: is that the sprites literally are different, and it's crazy in general <laughs> that people would think otherwise. Yeah, uh, it's uh, spicy. My favorite one is is Annabelle. Her Japanese name is Lila for lilac, but like, it's just in uh, with the uncorrected colors. Which also it depends on which system you played. Uh, yeah. The GBA SP looked different to the GBA, which looks different to the DS Lite and the DSi and the Virtual Console. There's a lot of things, and I think it's important in these discussions to not like, you know, shit on somebody else for what they like or dislike or grew up with. But mm -hmm. to acknowledge, like, hey, this is how it was made. This is how it's changed over time. Yeah, yeah. right. Now, I think that's I think that's really important too. Like, this kind of, in a way, could be related to like a, a big discussion right now. Is like AI art and stuff, mm. and it is kind of like you. On the one hand, people want to like honor their nostalgia. No, I remember it this way. But on the other hand, it's like, is it not better to honor the artist who did not intend for it to look like that? Yeah. No, for sure, artist intent and like respect is really important and uh it's funny I have this tweet up but there are people that will ai upscale uh artwork that we have to actively <laughs> yeah. be like okay yeah. uh yeah. let's try and not spread this around the internet because you've basically mm. watercolored like line art sure. and mm -hmm. it like we do, like we have to preserve like what the original artist wants or do we go for like high quality redraws and it's, yeah there's a lot to consider it's very very big <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, I, I, I wanted to bring this up. Um, this is by uh, Mick Selly. And yeah, Luto, you're saying you've also done this to sort of work. For listeners, what we're looking at is um, <clears throat> basically, uh, I, th I think for a long time, what would you call this? Like, a, a, It's not a scan, but um, Gen 3, I think it would be Gen 2 or Gen 3, uh, game, Gen 4 game footage would be pulled out. Um, or I guess emulated, and when it was captured and viewed on modern, like a modern monitor, everything would look blown out and saturated, not blown out, but saturated, right? Um, and then yeah. basically, I think what a lot of people have been doing, or at least what you're saying you're doing, what I've seen on Twitter is now there's these new versions where you can see uh, these, these uh, scenes from, or this gameplay footage with some sort of, color correction that actually reflects what you would have seen playing a Gen 3 game on a Game Boy Advance. Um, and in this instance, I totally see that the new, quote-unquote new, the, the, the modified version um, actually looks real to me because that's actually what i mm -hmm. remember seeing i don't remember seeing pikachu being a highlighter yellow color right right it, the 2019 one looks fake. like it's yeah yeah it looks like a rom hack yeah. or something mm -hmm. yeah so so i, so I really yeah. do think it is it, yeah it is all subjective it all kind of just i think it depends on what you grow up with um you did say something though there where it's like yeah you know we should obviously yeah you, you want to pay you want to pay respect to an artist's intention, but I do think it's it, it does go back to the fact that like once you give art to someone, it kind of takes up its own meaning. Um, you know, there's people like George Lucas, uh, the director of Star Wars, or Kanye West, an artist who will like go back and change their music after something's been out for five years, right? That that means these people have had twenty years in in Star Wars's case to live with this movie this piece of art that they love that they identify with right that have taught them lessons that have helped them like go through navigate the world with and then an artist says well actually i meant it this way right and then you you know and then when somehow palpatine returns <laughs> yeah right and you go back and you're like this is not how i remember it this actually starts to feel disrespectful the artist's change of uh, the art piece starts to feel disrespectful to the listener, to the or to the to the viewer, the piece, the person consuming the, the art. Consumer, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I do think I it. Think, yeah, I, I just want to well, bring that up, for example, because I, you know, as someone who is in this, you know, someone who follows Star Wars, that is something where it is actually goes full circle, um, and those original versions of Star Wars, of the Star Wars movies, uh, are no longer available. Right, you can only get well. See, that's the Star Wars that's the, movies with the new changes that George Lucas has made. That's the reason why people take issue with it, though. It's not that Lucas has changed his work because Sugimori has changed his work, yes, right? and nobody yeah. notices or complains. The problem is an accessibility issue. 
people yes. don't like that there is a new quote unquote type of Sugimori art because none of that was properly made available yeah. um, or in high quality or nobody had had to make a public release of it until, uh, you know, we're planning to. Yeah. And with George Lucas, there is no original 1977 theatrical cut of Star Wars. You cannot access that anymore. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Besides like uh, the despecialized version. But it's like the, the pro it's an accessibility issue. It's a services totally. issue. It's mm -hmm. not that, you know, people necessarily grew up with one thing and prefer the other. No, yeah, I totally like agree. I think I think like the comparison there is like, you know, George Lucas or Kanye West, I think you said, like they changed their own art later. And instead it'd be more like imagine that George Lucas intended for something to be a certain way in Star Wars, but then, you know, at some point in production, a video effects worker alters it and yeah. releases it and george lucas is like that's not what i intended yeah. and so yeah. it's not the artist altering their work it's something not the artist yeah altering their work or even something that's not a person but like just the work gets an altered. emulator <laughs> an emulator yeah, right. yeah, yeah like the the, yeah. the craziest thing you you mentioned uh sneasel and gen 2 before game boy colors are so fickle there are like 12 different revisions with different screens uh mm. Sneasel's sprite on on console actually does look blue. Hmm. It's it, like it's crazy um, that these that, like things were designed around this. Spinarak is purple in GS, yeah, but right. on console it looks green. And it's it, yeah, it's it's really really fascinating. And I really want to get more information and more technical stuff out there and tweet about it more. But people get angry at it, so <laughs> I don't know how worth it is. Oh, you're saying uh, here right so here. That is Twitter, there. isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, it is Twitter. So you're, you're saying you're saying in like crystal version, the Sneasel w looks a little bit more blue, like how it no, does so in, in its official art. In Sneasel, so Sneasel is really fascinating because we know its development. We've seen mm -hmm. like seven yeah. different design revisions of it, and it was just a like a normal mongoose. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. which is why it had a brown palette. But uh, Crystal, they did change the sprite to be more blue. But in GS, if you were to play Gold and Silver specifically on a Game Boy Color. It is likely that it would also look blue just because that's how the screen looked. Whereas oh, if you're I gonna see. play it on on emulator without any of these issues, it's gonna look or without any of those changes, it's going to be um it's gonna be brown. Game Boy Color games are weird. Uh GBA is like we kind of know like all of the revisions and how they function and how to create filters for MGBA that are built into MGBA. So like if you boot up MGBA now, you can just play with the original colors if you really want. That's cool. Um Yeah, so Sneasel is again a really fascinating example. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. So when do you think we're gonna get Pokemon ports? <laughs> <laughs> um never. No, I don't know. It it's really hard to figure out the intersectionality between Game Freak developing something uh that is going to be a part of Nintendo Switch Online that is going to connect to Pokemon Home. Like what if one of those services dies? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. what do they do then? Like, yeah, they don't, they're, lost they're not again. as in control of the product. So it's that's my interpretation as to why they're probably not going to do it because they would probably want to go all the way with it. Uh, they have done in the past. Mm -hmm. so. How how did they go all the way in the past? Because they made the games accessible, and now we're living in a post, you know, 3ds eShop world where you can't again new players can't get those games legally. Of no, course. for sure. But that is that's a services issue on Nintendo's part, and they're an evil corporation, right? Like, I'm not saying Game mm -hmm. Freak isn't, and they don't have the potential to be. But the fact of the matter is, is that I don't think there's a virtual console game that adds compatibility with other games. I think ever. Um, I could be wrong on that, but I know on the 3DS is the case, and yeah. they would naturally want to bring that uh, connectivity yeah. to their games if they were to port them forward. Definitely. And since they didn't do it with Stadium, and Nintendo was handling that port process. I don't think they're going to do it with Pokemon because all of your Pokemon are just stranded and they can't go to bank or home, yeah. you know? No, which would defeat the purpose of even having these. I yeah, feel like that argument of like, oh, well, they've never done it before on this on this console, that usually doesn't mean anything to me when it comes to a Pokemon game because I feel like Pokemon can be the first of its kind to do something. Um, obviously, the whole... Yeah, I think you make a good point. The whole the whole point of a Pokemon game. Like, I want to replay these classic Pokemon games, Red, Blue, and Yellow, Gold, Silver, and Ruby, Sapphire, so I can if port them up. If they were to do up. it, it wouldn't be on NSO, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I and it, I mean, if they, and even if they were on NSO, I wouldn't like that, but 
you know, I don't think it would go over well. But and they'd be in black and white, and there'd be no color options, yeah. and no stadium yeah. transfer, and it's like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe. I feel I like think the best bet is 30th anniversary, yeah. since that's the last time we saw him. Totally. Hmm. 30th True. anniversary is my bet. Dusty, do you want to ask him about your your little squabble there? What's the, squ- the original question, or did you? What's just, the squabble? You you gave the, is the best. Dusty go go yeah. a prophet or a moron or both? Yeah, this. <laughs> oh sure. Well yeah. Let's keep going. Well, I mean, is that really what this was about? He he, he just, just said. Uh, oh yeah. Moron, uh, uh, yeah. You want to you want to <laughs> debate my psychic powers? All right. That sounds good. Your yeah, psychic listen. powers. Well, here we go. I was wrong. Earlier, if you if you go back to the X Y tweet, uh, yeah. Earlier when you were reading out, you 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 corrected yourself. You said Pokemon X and Y could receive a faithful remake. I was like, That's yeah, yeah. Said. I said it, okay. they will. I, yeah, yeah. I, well, they I, could. I, obviously, I don't get it. It's just jokes, but. Yeah, uh, yes. I do think people are like, why does he tweet this? Because you type the word will. Instead. Yeah, I, I, no, I know. I'm I'm well aware. You type will that's because I try to tell people. I try to tell people. It's like listen, he it's phrases not... it as it's like something real, but it's just not. But yeah, I think it's... I think that's where people get aggravated with you, Dusty. Yeah, and sure. I I, I think it's cool. You know, I'm your friend, so I don't I don't him... care. Yeah, but I think people go. go we'll develop these titles. Because <laughs> another thing too, Dusty, is you've even talked about to me how there will be people who will take your tweet and they'll be like, "Confirmed leak," and like people will actually. I've seen take YouTubers. I've seen YouTubers right. say like, "All right, so Dusty Gogo just tweeted this," and like, you know, like so I don't I know, but this is you know, I'll take it for a grain of salt. But this, I think some literally, people would I'm like, say, just I am Google not one name. of those people, but I think some people would say that. Because you are aware that they're doing that, you have the what is it the the classic line from Spider Man with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Since you have that influence, you should probably word it a little more carefully no. to prevent the spread of misinformation. Or keep it up. He, I'm yeah. not down. saying that. Okay, I'm saying down. what I think. I'm du- I am doubling down from Ilka specifically. Yeah. Double down. Here's the thing: if you yeah. look at my profile, I don't say I'm a news source. I don't say I'm a leaker. I say Just, I do Pokemon theories. Does Pyoro say he's a I make fake or mon, and I talk about the future of Pokemon, and I'm a host and a producer. And you can see my podcast link. Bio. You can see my YouTube link. <laughs> That's it. And it's just f- filled with family wait, wait, scroll photos. Scroll up. Scroll up. Scroll up to the the pin tweet. Yeah. Will oh, and all. Will no, no. Will. Here's the deal. So this was actually. <laughs> I felt bad about this. So this actually, the first draft of this tweet, there was a line before it, and it, it said like, uh, it was like get real, or like, or like, it was like, uh, let's all be honest with ourselves. It was something like that, and then I said, so like the, the, it would have read, you know, let's all be real. Game Freak will pro- again. I was trying to say probably, probably. I, I, and then and <laughs> then I deleted, and then I deleted, <laughs> and then I tweeted it, and I read it back, and I said, shoot, I just did the thing. I think we even got a comment on the either the video or the post where this someone who watches our videos asked, "Is this legit?" Yeah, <laughs> I think so long as you're not like uh, trying to spread misinformation, it's fine. Like, right. No. I, I, I'm in the Twitter minds. I know how like everything works when it comes to like what to put in what part of the sentence to get the most amount of interaction totally. possible. Mm-hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean that your tweet is bad or bad faith or no. like, trying to sow the seeds of dissent. It's just how people respond to it. And... Yeah, so like right here, I started, uh, when I want to make a prediction for a cool idea, I literally just, I write the, This is just I, a Riddler Coup tweet though. Exactly, <laughs> no, but exactly. All it is is it's, it it's is. the topic with a colon and then you you make a space so there's a little you know again it's easy to read and then you do it like this so people can go boom 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 it's just an easy way to communicate information i could have written two paragraphs that people would have just scrolled by yep and no, no one would have thought those, about it those are, no one those would have do a tier list those are my tweets, tweets yeah those are those exactly those are soul soul tweets are, uh, <laughs> soul tweets are just long. five threads soul yeah. tweets are like this idea a thread and it's like it's for you know i cannot like help myself essays I have long to and then he quote tweets it that <laughs> night with another four you know yeah. art post <laughs> yeah what are you gonna um do? actually do you guys even want to talk about this this is kind of unrelated but i just saw My this tweets are crap. i just saw this project and i thought it was so cool someone made these beautiful gen 5 uh style uh sp- pixel sprites of all of the gen, gen 9 5? pokemon just, just gen 5 to you yeah these <laughs> yeah these these are I mean, gen 5 spray. style no, but these are yeah, Gen 5 style. Yeah, these are Gen 5 These are definitely proportion Gen 5. Mm-hmm. They look like they could move. Yeah. I've never thought about it like that. Wait, oh, who, yeah. who posted this? Was this King of the Actroads? This was no. Kyle Dove. Oh, Kyle Dove. Or Dove Kyle. 
Um, yeah, but I, the I saw this. The they're really really beautiful. Mm-hmm. I don't know if yeah, you guys yeah. have any thoughts. We were talking about it uh, the other day. Or at least everyone I didn't was tweeting cor- about it. I didn't want to correct him, but the Dunsparce actually has three spikes on its chin. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's an inconsistency. I, I, I didn't want to yeah. correct him, but I'm now going to call him out publicly. <laughs> because he's not going to see this. He's not going to see this. I don't know. I felt like doing it. I didn't want to do it on Twitter because I was just like, oh. He loves the so Dunsparce so much I he love... could not resist. <laughs> Listen, the Dunsparce sprite here that he made is one of the best I've ever seen. I love it. But that's why I saw that too. I was just like, oh. I can't go. So I, I can't you know. zoom in any further. It's it's art, you know? So. Yeah, I, uh... <laughs> Gen 5 sprites, as I've gotten older, I've kind of started to dislike them. I think overall my favorite style is probably Crystal and then HGSS and then mm. everything else after that. HGSS I, li- I like really them all. Good. I like them all. The older is I get. Is that the one where Arcanine's sitting? Good boy. Yeah, Arcanine's there's... sitting in green and... Okay. Yeah. There's there's ah, one there's so where Arc- there's one Arcanine sprite that I am like obsessed with, but I can't Yeah, that looks... Which... That looks like this, Gen that's 1. That's like the original Well, and one. even like, okay, so like click on the, the Reddit one, the evolution of Arcanine Sprites. The the one from uh, um like Gen 4, all three of those are, I love those. Yeah. The Gen 2 one's actually really great. The, but I think the Gen 5 one is the best. No, Gen 3 is really great. Gen 5 is weird because at the time, because what, I'm 24, so I would have been 10 when Black and White was coming out. Growing up with the idea that like, oh, these Pokemon are now actionable in a way that, uh, you know, I can I can see the move on the screen is really cool. Yeah. But, you know, Gen Five Black and White are my favorites. Uh, in in hindsight, I do prefer the more like actionable poses of, yeah. like Heart Gold and Soul Silver. They and Crystal they do like evoke more mm-hmm. feeling from those Pokemon rather than having like a dedicated idle position. But unlike the three D games, they don't have move animations and all these extra curricular stuff to interact right. with them in so absolutely do you mm-hmm. think we'll Wind ever run. see another pixel art game yes okay mm. explain one million percent uh profit i don't know if it's gonna be soon i don't know if it's gonna be at any point am i making predictions now uh, yeah you're making predictions at any point that's what we do on this so i mean you're you're right, i'll throw my, my terrible my terrible predictions uh i don't <laughs> make many besides Kalos being next and i was right so the the fact of the matter is, is that going back to existing things, I've been more confident of this if BDSB didn't come out because yeah. that game was designed to like appeal to the like lowest common denominator. Hey, Absolutely. we just want Sinnoh and there it is. Uh, now though, it's like, I think they're a bit wary about going back to things for the sake of it. I mean, hopefully. Um, it's possible. We might get my worst nightmare, which is like an HD2D black and white remake. Um, you think that'd be bad? I think it'd be horrible. Yeah. Explain. It would be awful. Fifty uh, percent <laughs> of this is I don't like the way that um, HD two D games looked. We are, I think we're going to see more of the Dragon Quest three remake at Summer Games Fest, which is really nice. It's probably the only time HD two D has looked good to me. But the last time we saw it was three years ago, and I don't I don't know what they're doing with it. But mm. it's it's like what if we took all of the gorgeous Gen five sprite work. And we put a bunch of Vaseline on it. We put a bunch of like blur on it. We <laughs> everything was fucking glowing, and yeah. it's like I, I that that to me is not what I want to see. I want to see sharp pixels. I don't want to see like weird filtered, you know, stuff where there's like a spotlight and like a you know like a vignette on everything. But mm-hmm. also the other part of it is like they got really um, not like lazy. I don't think that's the right word for game dev, but like complacent uh, with releasing Sinnoh with barely any changes because. Uh, it's Sinnoh, right? You guys are going to like it. It's just Sinnoh, how you remembered it, except it wasn't. And yeah, except it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, and I don't like that complacent type of game design, especially from Pokemon, as we said earlier, that has had more uh, mm-hmm. drastic remakes, especially with mm-hmm. ORS and Let's Go just going deeper and deeper. Yes. Yeah. I, I think that that was definitely my like biggest issue with Brand Diamond Shining Pearl was that ORS incorporating the Megas and, you know, the the post-game stuff was different, like doing the Delta episode and all that, and then Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl's like, here's the same game, but it looks worse. Yeah, and I think it's important to highlight, like, it being different isn't necessarily, like, a good thing, because I, the things you described in Oras, the, the Delta episode is like, I, I hate the Delta episode so much. Really? Um, oh. It's like the worst piece of writing in anything Pokemon, but uh, I do appreciate that they, they tried to do something. Mm-hmm. I do appreciate that they tried to bring Deoxys in or, you know, tie the Mega Evolution stuff to, to Emerald's story and try and get some sort of Emerald content in there. Mm-hmm. 
See, I'm a little bit different with Gen 5, but obviously you're saying that's your favorite game, so I, I understand. Um, but I, I just feel like changing it for a remake's sake is kind of nice. Like if they made like a whole different, maybe not the style that you were specifically saying is your nightmare, because that might not be mm-hmm. the best either. But yeah, just changing it somehow makes it feel fresh or new instead of just re-releasing the game like as a port, like kind of like what we were talking about before. Um, yeah. But I get I, mean, I get I, both sides. I get both sides. That one's interesting well, too because like, you know, if they remake it, Black 2 and White 2 is not just the platinum or the emerald to Black and White. It's or to uh, Ruby and Sapphire and uh, Diamond and Pearl. You know, it's more. It was a different story. It was a different game in the same region with new locations so it is kind of interesting you know when at some point they'll remake unova right so like when they do that what do they do (laughs) it's really it's really difficult we know that black and white was designed without black and white 2 in mind uh they've spoken about this they released the game they were like there are more things that we want to tell so they made it um Mm. and then obviously there's the plan to have a third version at some point that they scrapped but Mm -hmm. You know, so like remaking that isolation wouldn't necessarily be bad, but then they kind of have to, you know, cave to the expectations of, oh, right. when's black and white too? Does it have the same art style if we go for a different art style? It's a lot to, to comprehend, and I'd rather they don't. I'm really, really jaded after BDSP. Uh, I mm-hmm. don't think that they, I don't know, it's just really up in the air right now. I'm just, I'm, I'm happy we have ZA. That's all I'm going to say. I'm happy I don't have to worry for like two yeah. years. Okay? <laughs> That's true, yeah. Just kind of <laughs> push that into the deepest corner of your brain. That worry. <laughs> I, I do I'm think so. So sad on Pokemon Day. I was so worried. I was like, "Oh my yeah. god, am I gonna have to talk about this?" Like, and everyone was so. Even us were so certain about like what it was gonna be, and I'm so glad it was something like fresh, you know. Yes. Sure. Um, I think I, I do think even yeah. So you're saying like BDSP kind of give you pause and and has you a little bit concerned of the future of these like type of like remakes, um, but I do think. Pokemon, I guess the Pokemon company and Game Freak want to continue to introduce new Pokemon games that look visually distinct from one another. I think most of the last five games are like completely uh, different visually, um, and we haven't even seen gameplay footage of uh, of of Legend ZA. So I think we're all assuming it's going to look like Legends Arceus, and even though it might share an engine, we don't know if it will. Um, but if it does, even I think the I think the setting of the game, right, the proportions of the characters in the Pokemon, to uh, compared to the environment, to the city, right, the scale of the city, I think will look a lot different. The outfits that the characters are gonna are gonna wear, um, the French and European inspirations are gonna look a lot different. So even though those are you know both Legends games, even those will look very different. And I think what I'm I think the hope that I'm holding on to is the fact that or I guess the possibility that BDSP was an attempt at a chi- another top-down 3D chibi game and that maybe the Gen 5 game or the Gen 5 remake, uh, the Unova remake, um, or continuation if it's Black 3, White 3, could actually be more in line or just be driven uh, through like a, a pixel art um, engine. It's possible. I just think that BDSP's problem is, again, not that it's faithful to Diamond and Poe, like, that is a big problem, but if they weren't being faithful in the first place, then mm. we wouldn't have this issue. Yeah, The problem definitely. is that, uh, so you look at, like, Fire and Leaf Green, uh, that game is not intentionally regressive from Ruby and Sapphire. It's, uh, you know, still a remake. They're still trying to do a lot of things in that game that weren't done. The biggest thing I think people forget is that item icons were introduced in Fire and Leaf Green. Yeah. They have to draw new pixel art for, like, 400 items uh, and you know when they were just like re- they didn't have to do that, uh, they didn't have to yeah. do a lot of things with FRLG. They didn't have to do Sevi as much as I dislike it. They didn't have to do um, a bunch of stuff. And even then, that remake is like fairly conservative. They mm-hmm. BDSP is intentionally designed to uh, appeal to people that just like Sinnoh, and that the design mentality is the top-down problem that causes like every other issue. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I get that. While while we're on the topic of Legends EA, I do want to know your opinion on it in general, just because I am. <laughs> I have a lot of complicated opinions on the stuff that we know. Um, I know you have a lot of opinions in general that are strong opinions, which is, yeah. I like, you know. But <laughs> well, 
it's that's fine. crazy because I don't feel that strong opinions. But no, um, basically the issue, or the issue with like talking about ZA for me is I, I genuinely think I'll probably make a tweet about this at some point. But I genuinely, I genuinely think the first gameplay we see of it is going to are going to break people's brains in a good way and a bad way. I think the the build up that we've had no footage because I think Legends got scrutiny at the start. And that kind of helped its case, right? It, like, we weren't yeah. jump scared by anything. Uh, this is going to surprise a lot of people, both from what I know and from what we know. And when it comes to ZA just in general, I'm really optimistic. I, it really depends on what that 2025 date is. Yeah. That's where my optimism lies at the minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the big question in the end. <laughs> that d The date is like ridiculous. Um, but that's really that's interesting in general. Just I I agree with you. I think that it will be shocking in a lot of ways. Um, I don't it's think it's also just a, be a rehash or anything. But. It's also a case of who's making it. So really, really safe assumptions because there are I guess there are levels to it. Safe assumption is it's going to be made in the same engine as PLA. Um, right. It's going Ooh. to be released with at least three point five. Well, we know it's three point five years of development time. Mm -hmm. uh four years ideally if it's at the end of the year that would be amazing the only pokemon game to have four years was black and white uh yeah. mm. something that i discovered recently there was a job posting uh they were recruiting new people uh in an auto or in a like through famitsu and it mentions that oh uh ichiraku is the like lead of development team two which is really 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 weird because that was the guy that directed the hidden treasure of area zero and mm. it's like, okay, so that means Omori has been promoted. Uh, I don't know uh, where... God, I forget who the lead of development is on a Game Freak. Watanabe. I don't know what has happened to Watanabe, um, but Omori has assumedly been promoted to his position. All of this is to say is that I don't know where Iwao is, and that worries Iwao. me because he's my favorite director. Iwao um, the GOAT! <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really... I screamed when I saw his name in the Legends credits. Uh, I really hope that he's directing this, although I would it's kind assume. of called into question now. You think because of that? Uh, I, I still think Iwa was like a safe bet, uh, mm -hmm. because Ichiraku, like it is his uh, Hidden Treasure of Area Zero was his first right. uh, project that he directed, and it was split as well with uh, Rei Murayama. And yeah, I think it would be weird if he directed ZA. Um, the Especially worst right case scenario, yeah, yeah. The worst case scenario is that they started development at the end of like 2023, which I don't think they did. But um, yeah, I still think it's going to be Ewow. It's just like things are changing at Game Freak, so we'll mm -hmm. we'll see. Yeah, Ewow. I didn't know that about Amori. I'm kind of happy about that because <laughs> Amori. Yeah, no, Amori is my, uh, my assumption is that he's been promoted because somebody else has taken his role and he hasn't left the company. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. interesting, interesting. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I, I like the sound of that man i'm telling you ewell now my we're gonna favorite. we have yeah. we have a few phrases about ewell on the show ewell the goat and then ewell we trust mm -hmm. yep. yeah so i've been saying this since ultra sun and that guy is is awesome um mm -hmm. i've followed his journey ever since black and white uh and i really hope that he continues to go places i mean i can't imagine that he that he would leave yeah. I'd be very, very shocked. First, we want to thank our Mythical Tier supporters. Trash Panda, Indiana Jenkins, Ryan Stoll, Candace Wendy's Case, Coronet Highlander, and Sully the Skeleton. We want to give a special shout out to our Arceus Tier supporters, Young Smokey, Hayes, and SEH Art Gold. And we oh, want yeah. to give a gigantamax sized shout out to our Game Freak Inc. level supporters, Drogane yes. and Bramtastic. Boom! Thank you guys so much for Thank your continued you support. It's awesome to see. Uh, there's 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 a couple new names on that list. Um, yeah. If you want to we be shattered one, out, but you know, a couple sure. Yeah. If if you wanted to, if you want to be shattered out in our next episode, you can join the Patreon at one of those higher tiers. But if you want to unlock, uh, I think we have like over twenty episodes, which is close to twenty hours of bonus content or episodes of Secret Power. Uh, these are only available to YouTube channel members and patrons, um, but you can get access to that for $5 a month, as little as 5 bucks a month. That also gets you access to the secret Discord channel uh, or server, the secret Discord server where we all hang out. We chat every single day. There's so many great conversations going on in there. Uh, we also do a bunch of like, um, and we want to do more. 
uh, events and recordings and uh, yeah, live with, with those people, live streams with with those yeah. uh, people in our Discord. That's our core community. Question and answer. There's also uh, if you're interested. If you are interested, we're, we're launching some new uh, merch soon, but we also have a bunch of merch if you want to support and get a physical product. You can go on to, uh, there's, a, there's a link in, in the description. It should be shop.hiddenpowerpodcast.com. Uh, and if you join, in a, if you are a supporter uh, at that lowest tier, you get, uh, you, you get discounts, right? And the higher tier that you become, there's more and more discounts for Art. the merch uh, so that, you know, we're kind of, yeah. giving back and trying to make it as cheap as possible for those who already support us. Um, are we recording a commercial right now? We, we are. I think, this, I, yeah, this is a real commercial. This is it, guys. Yeah. We're going to put this on. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, we um we want to make it to 10,000 subscribers. Yeah. Cry so, yeah, but anyways, we appreciate you guys watching. We appreciate everyone who supports us financially. It does make it possible. This is going to be a slow year, but we're cruising, and we've got so much content planned. we got a lot of big guests in the pipeline maybe we're going to maybe we're going to hawaii i don't really know yet <laughs> it's up to you to decide <laughs> yeah all right man so what's your favorite pokemon type <laughs> uh ghosts one million percent beautiful mm. nice and your hidden power type My hidden power type <laughs> that's Probably the right ice, way because it's like in like when has hidden power ice not been good Mm. Yeah, hidden power ice. That's yeah, fair. it's pretty good. Maybe against like a rock <laughs> type, but those are usually ground types. Yeah, you always got like grass knot or something. Okay. Yeah. You you mm -hmm. you can always deal with it. I love it. What's your top six favorite Pokemon? Dream team. Six. Jesus. Um. That's a dream. So that's a that's Pokemon... a full team. Okay. Gotta have a favorite, party. My favorite Pokemon. My favorite Pokemon is Spiritomb. Uh, Ooh. and then it's Mewtwo. Of course. Uh, Azelf. Azelf. Uh, Cast form. Uh, God, I don't know. I don't know what we're doing with recency bias because I want to say like Slitherwing or Ogre Pond. Yeah, say Ogre say one of them. They're they're too good. Ogre Pond's great. Slitherwing. You know what? Slitherwing is less recent, so I don't get the recency bias allegations. True, true. Um, just don't say Terrapagos. Uh, wait. Did you guys say Terrapagos? I say Terrapagos. Terrapagos. Oh, okay. I'm definitely not pronouncing it like that. Okay. No, yeah. don't. Please. He's like, Wrong. is that a new Pokemon? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Spiritomb, Mewtwo, Cast Form, Azelf, uh, Dragapult. And I'll put Slitherwing there, sure. Why not? It's it's a team made nice. by a 10-year-old, but it's fine. It's no, good. it's beautiful. No, that's like great. It. I mean, that's I solid. mean, Cast Form is a weird... I weird like that. Part, yeah, is, there, is it just Cast Form <laughs> neutral? Or is it uh, Sunny Day? Every Cast Form is amazing in my heart, okay? okay. Yeah, that's when people fair, say though. he needs a new form, it's just so wrong to me. He's He's perfect as is. Yeah, I but mean, it would be nice to get a sandstorm. A sand form. one would be cool. And then he gets a new form for I each need, terrain. I don't need cast form to be OU and to have like fairy terrain cast form to like him. Okay, I love him <laughs> just the way he is. True, true. <laughs> it's fair. I get that with a lot of other Pokemon too, like Ledian and all that. The yeah, way I stuff. think about new forms though, it's not that like it needs it for competitive or it needs it to be better. It's just like there's a lot of things that would make sense. Like if a Pokemon has the anatomy and the ability to change based on weather and there's more weather that it doesn't change when it's in like that doesn't make sense allow it to have new forms like i think it just would have new forms naturally so that's where that's where that comes yeah, from i suppose i suppose because like if yeah. this is a whole world in a whole you know universe there's there's way more than a thousand pokemon there's like a hundred thousand pokemon oh. i don't know cast form is <laughs> It's such an interesting uh, design for me because it's like it like some weird fucking weather balloon. I like yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, it's well endowed. Yeah, it's it's a living cloud. So I don't know how sandstorms would work with that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's that, true. No, that is that's actually a good point. They call sandstorm weather, but it's really it's not really weather. That's actually. I mean, a, yeah, it is in terms weather. of Pokemon weather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mechanically, it's like. I don't know. Sandstorm is a weird weather, anyway. I did. I got lit up on Twitter like a year ago because I did not know that Sandstorm increased special defense for yeah. rock types mm. by like fifty percent. Uh, it's broken. Were so you denying it? About that. Maybe no. We I need just didn't fog. know this was true. Oh. Fog is technically a weather. Maybe yeah, we do we need fog foggy cast, cast form? form? We need Delta Stream cast form. Yes. Delta stream, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. That'd be, That'd be sweet. Um, I mean, and you know, like 
it functioned a little bit different, but, like, even Sword and Shield changed stuff up where, like, Fog was now Misty Terrain and Thunderstorms was Rain plus Electric Terrain. Yeah, this... God, uh, hold on, let me open up BDSpedia because I wrote about this recently. BDSpedia? Yeah, so... In working on Sigma Platinum, I was like, damn, there's no documentation for BDSP modding anywhere. So uh, let's write up some of that. But there's like really weird weather conditions in BDSP that just don't get used ever. Really? Um, That's wild. Yeah, there's a bunch of like unused ones. And the then again, they, they do that all the time with unused stuff. Yeah, there's like, uh, there's Spark, which is like rain and electric terrain, which I oh, don't think cool. you ever see lightning in the game. Uh, dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm guessing some weather. of this was like them kind of taking from Sword and Shield because, like, again, Sword and Shield had the thunderstorms where it was rain and electric terrain. Yeah, like, so, like if you click that link, it should take you to the weather section uh, that I made. And uh, there's like cloudiness, which I don't think is ever used in the game. Dude, what? Yeah, there's a uh, there's like heavy so snowstorm, which is used. There's a uh, spirit mystic sparking effect which like has the effect of rain and electric terrain but none of the weather there's max which i don't know what the hell that is there's a lot of unused stuff in this there's vol it's kind of sad i would have i would have enjoyed some of this <laughs> yeah, max they, was for dynamax wait wait so these were not actually in the game no these are in the game so in the map info uh document there are parameters for up to 20 different weather effects and they all have internal names and uh you can set these on a per route basis if you mod the game. I, I don't know if I mentioned Sigma Platinum earlier, but that's also yeah, a crazy that project. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, flash. There's a lot of unused stuff in BDSP. There's the uh, there's the battle environments where like yeah. you don't even visit half of these as well. This one. It sucks because when when I look at screenshots of BDSP, I actually go, "This is really charming, and I like this." But when I play it and the character gets stuck on every single yeah, object in the overworld, and... <laughs> I hate the game. And I'm like, this was not made with usability in mind. It was just like, let's make... And then you try to use the D-pad and it's yeah. like, okay, I'm not stuck to the grid now and yeah. I'm still bash bashing into fences. Uh -huh. It's like, wow. Yep. It's th those are, the, those are the, the major issues for me why BDSP are not that much fun to play back. Also... Like I think I just much prefer the pixel art. Like if I'm gonna, if there's an option to Let choose a 3D that. or a pixel art version of a game, I'm gonna play the pixel art version. So, mm -hmm. but if this game I didn't is like that, I can't play Capture the Flag Underground. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> oh my god! But I never they played that as a kid. Butchered the Underground. They butchered the yeah, Underground. They, they butchered mm -hmm. contests. However, mm -hmm. the Underground is pretty cool. The fact that you like if they if the Underground. No. If the underground had both features, like if it had feature, if it had all the original features and wild fine, Pokemon, yeah. that would have been mm. great. Absolutely. Maybe. I, I think the problem is that the problem with the underground in every iteration is that there's a bunch of mechanics, but none of them like link into each other or like coalesce into like any meaningful mm. gameplay loop. Like the mining is disconnected from the wild Pokemon, which is disconnected from the traps, which is disconnected from capture the flag and yeah. the multiplayer and, and like the secret bases. And they, it needs something to like tie it all together and. I don't know. Maybe we can do that in Sigplet. Who knows? Dude. Yeah, I, I think, I think, yeah, that's another thing that I had with Brand Down and Shining Pearl was like, you still had so many Sinnoh Pokemon that were locked to the post game. Like, I could totally. not use Gliscor, and that is my son. Mm hmm. Yeah. I, uh, from me. Everyone was complaining about the Elite Four being super hard, and then I just like looked back at my footage for the footage archive. And uh, I have like a level 61 Gligar that is one shotting <laughs> everything with acrobatics. I'm like, uh. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like I really do look at this and I'm like I kind of want to play this game, but I know it's not going to play as well as <laughs> oh. this looks. Yeah, I it's true. I have a friend and she has been like, "You know what? I really want to buy BDSP." And I'm like, "Don't. Like, it's, don't it's buy sludge. it. Don't do that. Just yeah, mm. emulate it." <laughs> um <sighs> yeah, here hold on one second. Yeah, so what what is your favorite Pokémon game? Uh in Regards to just overall, yeah, I think, it yeah. could be your, with like your uh, favorite, on. your personal favorite. Loot it can even be a spinoff. Loot you tier list. Just pull Loot up the whole thing. Oh, do you have? <laughs> Didn't you recently All do games? One? Yeah, I did, and it's the most yeah. objectively true thing. Mm. Uh, yeah, for sure. you. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll just drop it in the chat. No, I got it. I already pulled tweet. it up. No, the most recent tweet, this is a shitpost tweet about the fastest surfing speed. 
Okay, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't read it. I just the saw the tier list. Nobody reads yeah. it. It's so funny. I, I got like 10 replies Wait. being like, "Why? how could you put this in this place? And it's like, you didn't even read the, the tweet. Hmm. Yeah. No, normally I would. I'm just kind of on vacation right now. So. <laughs> but yeah, no, this, uh, yeah, this is my, my list. Okay. Black and white. Black, black and white. white and black. black 2, white 2, Harkle, Soul Silver, Legends, Arceus. Yeah, dude, this is great. Yeah. I, I would probably bump. <laughs> Those for, are solid S honestly, tiers. yeah, I mean yeah. this this is pretty objective. I would bump Emerald up though. I think Emerald has a lot of merit. Uh, it's not so much a it like obviously the engine uh, for where Pokemon was at at that point, like in mechanically how Pokemon how the game plays. I think it ends up. It's really just like a it's like a retro game at the end of the day, I right? I don't think we can go through his whole tier list, or we'll be here a whole. No, day. I know, I know. I'm, just, I, I'm, I'm taking I'm, a quick I'm look at it. Anything, okay. Um, <laughs> I don't think Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon are that great. Again, no, I, no, ooh. let's not get, let's not Usum, go there. Usum have problems, but uh, I then look can at they Oras, be S tier? I, I look at Oras and I'm like, there's so many things wrong with this game that I can't put it any higher, and I don't want to put Usum any lower, so it it yeah. makes it hard. I, I think X and Y should be lower. When listening to Dusty's critiques, do keep in mind that when ranking the Gem 4 Pokemon, he wanted to put Cherubi in S tier. So. What is wrong with Cherubi? Wait, that's totally fun. Wait, Cherubi's cute. It has a really cute Thank you, oh, Lewis. My God, S tier. Thank you. Listen, here's the deal. Okay. An S tier Pokemon is a Pokemon that you would not want to change any further. It's a circle with another circle, and it's cute, and it's a plant. <laughs> How many period. amazing things it's have you said It's super cute. It's super cute. It works well with the ecology of, yes. the, of the series. Ecology like is it. a great word. Yeah, I, uh, but, but would you put it in S tier, though? That's the real question. What would I put in S tier for Pokemon? Does no, no. Would like you put Cherubi? Cherubi would Cherubi go in S tier for you? Uh, I'd have to look at all the Cinnamons. I really I really don't like a lot of the Cinnamons. Poe was my first game, which is neither probably why I'm so... Uh, <laughs> Beholden so to cute. BDSP and how Don't say is, neither but... do we, so I love the Gym 4 Mons. Yeah, That's well, a you cute. problem. Little fun just fact, Truby has a burgundy strip uh, on its head. I didn't even know that, but it's so cute. Yeah, yeah so no, you didn't I... even notice a giant detail literally on the thing's No, forehead. I you didn't notice it, but, but and then we did our tier list, and then I noticed it, and then I said, oh. That's pushing it over the edge. It's guest tier. Oh, Gen 4 is so weird for me because I hate so many of the evolutions yeah. to older gen Pokemon. Why did they do that? Mm, oh my god. Adorable. Um, you don't like I'm Licky not Licky? You're not a Licky Licky fan? No, I like Licky Licky. That's one of okay. the other ones. Cool. I like. Uh, is it Licky Licky, Licky, Licky or Licky Licky? Licky Licky. Pretty sure. I say Japanese Licky. is Bero Bero Tho. So yeah, so Licky I have no Licky. Idea. Mm -hmm. Probo um, Pass? Probo Pass is good. Um, okay. It's the ones that everybody likes. I'm not saying that to be a contrarian. Uh, I hate Gallade. Yeah. I hate Magmata. I hate Electivire. You I hate, hate Rhyperia. Gallade? Yeah, that's a little yes, extreme. I hate Gallade. You hate it? Wow. Yeah. I, I don't know why we needed like a male evolution to Kalia. Why did we need that? Yeah, we didn't need it. I don't know if we needed it. We didn't need it, but cool. it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess we should just make... I don't know. To me, I think... Obviously, like the, the Japanese Smash, inspiration... Like, it feels of... like a wasted slot. Yeah, I think I think obviously the the inspiration, the Japanese inspiration for uh, Gardevoir was lost in translation in a lot of Western nations, where people just looked at yeah. it and said, "Oh no, it's a girl. Let's make a boy version." Yeah, it is like, I don't know. It it does feel very weird to me that they that they felt the need to do that. But they also did the same thing to Frostlass. But I wouldn't also call like male or Glalie like very male. Yeah. Focus because I mean it isn't. That's a good know. point. It's, gendered evolutions are interesting because. Uh, it's like they're providing like additional RNG on top of like getting yeah. an evolution. Um, I guess that this was one has like a Dawnstone as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, in well, Gen yeah. Four, I mean they were gonna. Here's the thing, you know, we can all complain about Pokemon games, but I think we should all be very grateful that we never got uh, dex wide gender variants for every single Pokemon. Right? Let's Some all of be them were let... bad. Yeah, That's so some cute, of them though. were awful. I love the Pikachu one. The Pikachu yeah, one. No, yeah. I don't. I don't know if I agree with but that. I think uh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about the lost ones. Bad. Do you guys know what I'm talking yeah. about? The, the lost ones. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. So the the gen or oh, the Pikachu that is so much better than the final one. They gave it a hot tail, mm. yeah, which the is hot like tails dumb. I'm. <laughs> that's actually like eye rolling. I love the little droopy ears that they gave it um, mm -hmm. originally. I agree. I agree. I so hate much. Charizards. 
No, Charizard was, was great. It was, like, like it was it. awful. Gen 4 Charizard like is so is so yeah. fascinating because like trying to pull they, up a um, picture. I was looking through the I think it's the the Pokedex like translation document, um, the one where there's comments from Nobogasawara talking about creationism and Arceus. But mm -hmm. there's uh yeah, they were gonna have like uh, an evolution for Charmeleon at some point. It's the only like Gen 4 cup Pokemon that we know about. Um it's called like Lizard Gun or something, and we have no idea what it would have looked like. So oh, I didn't even it feels know like that. they would have made the uh yeah, it feels like they would have made the uh, the gender thing with that in mind. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. No, this is amazing. This is so good. I don't yeah, like it. That was the, it's funny. I like it. That was the original, like Charizard with the one, uh, the one horn. Yeah, I guess this doesn't look so bad here, but I've seen here. Is there? I don't like it. Yeah, it's similar to the Charizard drawn on uh, the Cardass sticker mm -hmm. by Sugimori. Yep. It's all, it actually the um you know like the famous TCG Charizard only has one. The Wobbuffet with long hair is funny. Wait, the Arita Charizard? I think so. The original one, unless I'm misremembering, but I'm pretty sure it's like no, it's it has hidden. two. Yeah, it has two, but one of them is obscured. Okay, I always yeah. assumed it was just the 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 one horn. Yeah, it's a it's a weird angle. So this one has it right here. Oh, right here. Oh, this one right yeah, here. That's you what mean? he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from the, the yeah that actually so. is that actually is pretty cool that it's a, like kind of a callback. I think the issue for me with a lot of these gender variants is that they were kind of an aftermath. Like when you design a Pokemon, I mean none of us design Pokemon, but when when the creators design a Pokemon, like the proportions, the silhouette, everything about the Pokemon is intentional and makes sense with the rest of the design. Right? There's like a co cohesiveness with the Pokemon art. And then you go, well, let's just make its head giant, right? Let's make its abdomen giant. Let's make it, let's just make its tail all one color or in the shape of a heart. And now you're losing a lot of that, like, that cohesion with the design. And that's what I feel For like sure. a lot. That's I, what I feel like is, like, I honestly, here's the thing. I apps, I love Heracross and I think they butchered the female version because they, they ruined the most iconic thing about Heracross, which was its horn. And they made it a heart, and it does. It just looks so stupid. I like the idea that you can scoop things with the new horn better, or the female horn. But like, <laughs> sure. The I think the problem with gender variants in Pokemon is like, that they're not that interesting. Yeah, they're not that's, that interesting. Yeah, to yeah. Me. like they don't they don't reflect like how this would work in the real world. Mm. Yeah. Um, they don't like extrapolate further from that. Yeah, that's they're a also good point. just like it's a woman or it's a female, so give it a heart. It's like, right. they did that to Eevee and let's go. Why did they need to do that? Yeah. But one yeah. stick yeah. on it. Okay, the that's Wabbath, The Wabbafet one is funny. Else, I did think <laughs> it's funny. Everything I did else like is it. Just like really, everything else is just really... Uh, it, yeah. It's only funny because it's Wabbafet. If they like went and were like, ah, let's do that to like, you know, I don't know, Charizard, Arcanine, Dude, something. Dude, every I female... Like, All right. Canceled. I actually love the the cut one because they made like its head it's, piece has long look hair. Like long yeah. hair. I did like. Yeah, that, that is I'm a little surprised bit you like yeah. that stole. I'm surprised it isn't just a man I, to you. But I think for it, that, it's like it changes the design like enough. It. Yeah, I just that's exactly it. Is that it makes it more different to be to like qualify as it, a form. I agree with you. Yeah. It would have been cool if it had been a bit more realistic with things like you know, Swellow's a very brightly colored bird, and they just have like a dull Swellow. Yeah, mm -hmm. we could do a whole episode on this. Yeah, obviously. honestly, we probably should. We could just yeah, do, beta, we could do a whole thing. Like but. early prototype revisions of stuff are so poorly documented for Pokemon. Like at Helix mm -hmm. Chamber, we've uh, done a pretty good job with Gen Two, but like everything else is really scattershot. Like I think Let's Go and Sword and Shield. I think I'm like the not the sole contributor, but I've like I think written the most information about that game. Yeah, and there's like three sword and shield builds that one of them has like a full story that we need translated in so much yeah yeah um, so i i got two more questions one when was your pokemon break <laughs> if you had Pokemon one. break yeah if you had uh, you have to if I had one? Bit. surely you if must you have, have stopped it a bit dusty i yeah, okay. have one not everyone has one so yeah. what no, we I've find is we have people on the yeah. show and we say, oh, when did you get into Pokemon? Like, uh, when did you start creating? And then at some point they say, well, I stopped playing in Generation 4 or I stopped playing in Generation 6. And usually when they come back to the series after this Pokemon break, uh, it just kind of solidifies their love for the series. So mm. we're wondering if you have a Pokemon break, if you've ever had one. I have had two that I can I can really remember. Um, 
one was right after black and white two came out mm. there was a lot of like personal shakeups in my life that were happening mm. and mm -hmm. there was also uh i think i was playing a lot of minecraft at the time it would have been like 2012 and sure. that was kind of the the big break for me and then xy came out and then uh i got into like you know the youtube scene and uh you know made a bunch of friends through that and got super back into it and then i would have fallen off again uh around about 2016 probably because of melee yeah and then i came back with ultra sun and moon and that's when i like started uh i started doing like content with let's go uh around that era uh mm -hmm. but yeah, Usum was when I, I came back, and I think it's why I have like such a fondness for that game. The amount of stuff in that game is crazy. So yep, I, I agree. I'm, I'm due a, a replay. Too. I'm definitely due a replay. The Hoenn region is yeah. like solidified in my mind through the through the Gen three games, but I have mm -hmm. not played Oraz enough. So I'm I'm due. I'm yeah, due a I uh, I've played Emerald and Oras and RS like five times within the last few months i think i have nice. problems uh, usually they're for videos but uh <laughs> mm -hmm. i i haven't played usum since that playthrough really oh no i, went I back to play it i think i saw you was... posted your 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 team and you were using like a huntail and you were using like a lot of weird pokemon yeah i i love doing that okay my ruby cool. team is deranged uh what was it right now uh i haven't posted about it yet but okay. my Ruby team, it has the bonus disc Jirachi. So very cool. That, nice. Yeah, very balancing cool. that in is so weird because like I got it after Brawly because I was like, oh, it's not good on the gyms coming up. But then it gets like psychic at level 20 and there's boosted XP because it's traded. Yeah. It's like, uh, <laughs> it's really strong. <laughs> no way. Cool. And then final question. Am I am I a prophet? What, no. what, what do we think? <laughs> Good no, answer. I, I was I DM I DM my friend a picture of the French flag one minute before the uh, presentation. Yeah, and I messaged her like twenty minutes later. I was like, I can't fucking believe it. Yeah, I knew it. Um, it it's wild. Did you do it like, as a joke, or did you really feel like you know what? They're just gonna I they're gonna drop Kalos right on us like that. I think it's the one question I don't want to answer. Okay. Yeah. Well, here, <laughs> here's, right, the, right. here's the thing, Lewis. Right? If mm -hmm. yo. If you really, if you really, if you really have conviction in your own ideas, you'll post them as fake leaks on Twitter. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> you say that because I'm uh, wrong 99 percent of the time, but it does feel good to look back uh, after Scarlet and Violet, like during that era, and be like, we we talked a lot about Kalos, and we, you know, there were a lot of hints. Yeah. What he's saying you, like, is he loves to fire wrong, off. Right? He's saying he loves to fire off a hundred arrows in the dark and then go, Ooh, look, one hit a target. I'm Legolas. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm one for one, okay? I uh Yeah, yeah. It, it's really funny. I don't say this to like guess myself up, but You gotta post proof. Scarlet you, listen, okay, go back to the Scarlet and Violet video um that I sure. made. And in that video, every issue that I said or that I had with the game, like people not liking the main character designs, uh the frame rate of the game and the way the game looks. I was like, people are going to complain about this. Everyone was like, you know what? Uh, oh, thanks for the sub. Uh, yeah, this, is the, like, you know you this is the Hidden Power channel. This is the Hidden Power channel. It's going to change before release. Uh, it's going to change before release. You're wrong. And uh, literally, it was the one thing that everyone complained about. Um, so, But yeah, no, in terms of like, you want me to like make a crazy prediction right now? Yeah, I guess I'm just, uh, so yes. I mean, yeah, I, I think my, I got a lot of pet ideas, but what I love to hear from people that we have on is what are their crazy ideas what are their pet theories what are their what do they think could be in the next you know five where's years where's jen gonna be set in yeah like i think those <laughs> things are fun to talk about okay my crazy cracked idea yeah here we go is uh let's see one thing that i've been floating about for a while is the idea that gen 10 is gonna have every single pokemon in it and they're mm. gonna use it as a marketing uh, yeah device. no I love that. It's going to have the Smash Ultimate. Everyone is here moment, and everybody's going to eat it up because, obviously. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's obviously. my prediction. Is Gen no, that's a great idea. Remove the exit, and then they're going to be able to justify it after Gen 10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I that's, think that, uh, that could yeah. be very accurate arrow shooting that you got going on there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. my one arrow. <laughs> Your one arrow. That sounds re very realistic. I like that. Me, so. Yeah. Um, nice. I want to keep going, but we do got to wrap up. Uh but yeah, Lewis, uh, do you have any final uh, final thoughts, or do you guys or do uh, you guys have any final questions? What regions Gen Ten going to be set in? Uh, <laughs> he really wants to know. But I, I I really want to say China. I think that would be super interesting. But there's so many reasons why they wouldn't do that. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? To bring it back to Japan, okay? Yeah. I know we just had Kitakami. Uh, I'm I'm tired. Okay, I don't want to go to anywhere else in Europe. We're yeah. so boring over here. Have you watched um, our? We, we did a full video um, with Poke Satami, uh, detailing where in the like where a new Japanese region could be based in the Pokemon universe. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen that, but that was a really fun deep dive. I haven't, I haven't seen that, but she's awesome. She helps us with uh, scans of stuff. She helped us with the Ors uh, awesome. book. Awesome. Yeah, she's uh, really, God, she's I'm really trying great. to think of like which which prefectures have they done? Uh, maybe something like Western Japan. I don't know. Um, yeah. the, she mentioned it was. Uh, I forget. I forget the name of it, but the one between Hokkaido and like you know uh, Kyoto and Kanto. And That's then also, is it the Chugoku region? That's like below. It's like connected to Kyoto. Uh, well, maybe my else? Japanese geography is not. Uh, I don't know where Chugoku is, but mm-hmm. that's like where Hiroshima and Nagasaki are located. Uh, it's possible. Yeah, that yeah, that's like the western coast. Um, yeah, I think it, it, it's west. Pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Totori. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe I could see it. I could see it happening anyway. Yeah, I mean, I guess Gen Two was gonna cover the whole of Japan at some point, uh, and then yeah, yeah. They, which is insane. They got rid of that, which yeah. thank God because it wasn't that good. But yeah, yeah that's it's a better better yeah. option. Yeah, I, I think in sure. Gen Ten, vision. I think in Gen Ten mm-hmm. we're either gonna go to a new region, and that maybe Kitakami is like some sort of reference to that, or uh, I do think we're gonna return to Kanto sooner than later. I have always said the they system. make a point. To never call Kitakami the Kitakami region. They say the land of Kitakami. Yeah. So the land of Kitakami could just be a part mm-hmm. of a bigger region. Yeah, it's not uh, classified as a region. It's right. uh, it's just its own thing, which I think they probably just do it to be more flexible so they don't have mm-hmm. to feel mm-hmm. like there's a new region of Pokemon. Like they can just sure. you know, not have to commit to something in the world. Right. Yeah. But yeah, it makes sense. I, but like I would how like Isle of Armor well. is a land, but it's a part of Galar. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, I just think they like to be very liquid with it because mm-hmm. yeah, I agree. There's already so many terms that they have to like keep up with, and they always trip themselves sure. up on like they've they've tweeted about like starter Pokemon like four times in the last like month, and it's first like, partner. When Pokemon. does it end? Yeah, yeah. Oh, when that, does it end? That's an interesting uh, discussion okay. <laughs> in and of itself. <laughs> the first partner Pokemon, yeah. Well, uh, Lewis, thank you so much for coming on the Hidden Power Podcast and sharing some of your ideas. Um, Lumi, who is the oh, the winner uh, of this debate? Who is the winner of this debate? Um, I would say that the real winners are the friends, friends we, we made, made along the way. way. Okay, that's a great one. <laughs> Look, I, made, I made one correct prediction, and you made zero so far. Yeah, that's I, not even true. I mean... Jesse, I love we, you. We've crunched I'm going to have to hand this one to Lou, too. <laughs> crunch if you, if you, you were going to, I've definitely I was made going some, to. I've definitely if made you, some correct predictions. I think you lost when when you were rereading your tweet. Instead of saying will, you read it as could, Ooh, you even though you typed it. Could, even though you typed will but here's the I thing that's auto... where you lost your debate but but it's like it's like official pokemon I... art right it shows up differently in different context when we're on twitter <laughs> oh my god when we're on twitter we're rage baiting when i'm in a podcast format and we're we? discussing hold on okay. yeah we? you're part <laughs> Lutu, you're part of this oh now god. you're part of this universe now you're oh, you're oh, a com- you're complicit <laughs> um but anyways Lutu, tell people where they can uh check you out uh plug anything that you want to plug uh so uh lutu i am lutu on everything except for twitter where i'm lutube because there was this old like 80 year old woman that had that account and <laughs> it's gone now and i can't change the name i don't know why uh but yeah i'm lutu lutube on twitter lutu on everything else uh youtube uh instagram and tiktok soon ish maybe okay. uh and also my website is lutu.net oh it's a new website oh. okay I'll, I'll post more about that later. Who knows? But thank cool. you. We'll put the, we'll put all the the links in the description. Thank you so much for being here with us, man. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, I'll see you over on Twitter. Okay, no worries. It's great no worries. to have thank you very much. Yeah, it was great having you. All right, see you guys. Bye. <laughs>